Yes, a uh, very good afternoon to every, everybody on this most glorious afternoon here at Juma Private Game Reserve. The weather is beautiful, no wind, as you can see the reflection on Chilla Pan from this beautiful jackal berry tree that we are looking at here at Juma Private Game Reserve in the Swabi Sand, South Africa. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Cedric Dold, and behind the camera with me this afternoon, we've got Johan on Rusty. So thank you very much for joining us this afternoon. And I'm hoping that we are going to find some fantastic things for everybody to see. And hopefully we can keep you guys all glued to the screen this afternoon. And we've got uh, Liam and uh, BK on uh, Wendy this afternoon. We're going to have, of course, down in Pridelands, Chris and Paul. Down in the Eastern Cape, Lauren Darby. And, of course, on Dam Cam, we've got uh, Ralph. So, as you can see, we are live. We are interactive. So please send any comments, questions, suggestions, stories, anything that you've had to witness in, in something interesting on Wild Earth, send it to, of course, our Wild Earth uh, website, and that is wildearth.tv. Go onto our questions page, and then just make sure that you do register. Registration is for free. It's a very quick uh, registration, and then you can pop your questions and comments and everything that you want onto that page. Or if you're not uh, really interested in getting onto that page, just go onto our QR code. It's a little white box that's at the bottom of the screen. Just grab your cell phone, open that camera, and just frame up that QR code, and then just scan it in, and that is going to take you directly to the questions page. And then if you haven't registered yet, then make sure that you do register, and then of course you can send those comments and questions to us. Yes, 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 and I'm really, we're all looking forward to all those uh, uh, comments and questions this afternoon and I'm hoping that we are going to find some magical stuff for everybody. It is a wonderful afternoon weather-wise, looking at about 25, 26 degrees Celsius and uh, definitely a couple of clouds, but it's not so cold or it's uh, actually more warmish than coldish. Fantastic, but yeah, while we're talking about the weather, let's take a look at the weather all around. Good afternoon, good afternoon, and uh, welcome to the second vehicle out on drive, live for Wild Earth, Earth TV from uh, the heart of the Savi Sands. We are uh, enjoying a little bit of birding buzz this afternoon with uh, some little bee eaters flitting in and out of the water here at Treehouse Dam. But before we get there, uh, my name is Liam Burrow. I'm the very fortunate. Right, uh, we're coming back to Chelapan. The reason for this is uh, why I'm coming to Chelapan is, as you know, this uh, weekend uh, it is a waterhole weekend. So, of course, uh, on the 9th and the 10th of uh, July, we are going to be bouncing and hopping from pan to pan or dam to dam, uh, pans like these ones, and just going to sit there for a bit and actually witness on what's happening around these pans and dams for the weekend. So, please grab your snacks and hats and uh, join us on our Warthog, Warthog, what do you always say, Warthog? <laughs> Warthog weekend. <laughs> I think I used to call uh, Warthogs water dogs when I was a kid. That's why I've got that all mixed up. But anyway, so <laughs> on the Waterhole weekend, so that is the 9th and the 10th of July. So I'm looking forward to that. On top of that as well, I'm going to head over to where Tlalamba had a uh, Cubs this morning. I know that Liam had it somewhere there. And uh, near the south, and we got to take a look and follow up on that. We want to make it even easier for you to interact with our guides whilst watching Wild Earth. 
When you see a QR code like this pop up on your screen, then open your phone camera, point it at the code, and you will be taken directly to our question page. Simple as that. Then you can let us know what you want to see, ask questions, and much more. Well, I've had it before where I've been walking and the water bucks jumped out of the grass. It's quite a frightening experience. Wild Earth, it's in your nature. As you can see this beautiful kind of slinky stripe that's going along the road yeah, it looks like something has disturbed the sand quite heavily here and uh, if anybody can give me an answer on what has made these tracks please send them through to our website wildearth.tv and go to our questions page send those comments through on what do you think has made this mark on the ground very fresh definitely there's nothing else on top of it and so it's got a line and we've got a couple of things around here but what do you think think about uh, we are at chiller pan make think about that one so that is going to be a clue there is a pan right here so what do you think we would have gone down to the water area uh, that is very nice to see hmm. i'm just trying to take a look and the direction is as a pretty much going actually that way because it's dragging whatever back and it's heading into that direction uh, <laughs> nico well done definitely a monitor lizard well done you can see the tail of course being dragged to the side from one side walking just like a crocodile you know got that typical movement from side to side so nico you are on the mark this afternoon thank you very much for that answer a monitor lizard it's probably maybe a water monitor going down to i didn't see but it's not going that side it's actually heading that in that direction so that is very interesting i wonder if it wasn't around chiller pan for uh, during the morning or yesterday or whenever and uh, today because of the sun it's nice and warm maybe it's decided because the pan the water is starting to kind of uh, subside quite uh, quite a bit now because of all this heat no rain anymore so i think it might have gone to another watering hole but anyway on that note let's head to pridelands to chris to say good afternoon to everybody Right, from a monitor lizard track to a lion track. We here live at Priding, Pridelands, right north of Hoodspread. And I'm going to try and find this lions yet again. Same tracks as this morning. Um, we're trying to figure out if this set is before or after we started tracking them. It looks like it is after, possibly late morning. What we're going to do is uh, be far behind them, but hopefully we'll get opportunity to track them on foot, find them, and show them to you. My name is Chris, and Mpo is rigged up on the camera with us today. And let's just see where they go. So just going to walk on this side for the sake of the shade and not to cover the tracks. They have kept us busy with them all morning on foot, did not find them. But I firmly believe they're still around. I want to find these cats. Some more tracks here. You can see here. You can see it's on top of the vehicle tracks. So I think we, we've got a shot here. A little bit further, let's go over to Ralf to say good afternoon. Well, hello, good day, and welcome to another afternoon's Waterhole Watch. We're coming to you live from the Juma Dam Cam in the Juma 
Game Reserve in the Sabi Sands of the Greater Kruger National Park in South Africa. My name is Ralph Kirsten, and uh, on the cameras is also me, um, and we are going to be watching and waiting, panning and scanning. That's the name of the game here at the Waterholes. And please don't forget to send us your questions and your comments using the link wildearth.tv forward slash questions or scan the QR code at the bottom of your screen. Now, we had a wonderful morning at the Waterholes. There was all sorts of action going on. Here at the Juma Dam Camp currently, we've got that heron just uh, sitting on a branch next to the water. Doesn't seem to be doing any fishing currently, but we've also got the hippos who are back after a couple of days. And I'm just going to slow that camera down a little bit. But Dewey has been mating. the amount of oxpack is on this poor, poor hippopotamus. It's almost more oxpacker than skin at the moment. Although they do seem to be retreating now it's heading into the water. Maybe that's what you should have done first there. Wow, they really are. That was an effective method there, hippopotamus. Well done. And oh, they go. <laughs> But um, the gestation period for hippos is eight months. So if this is successful and she conceives, we should see a little baby hippo around March next year, which would be very nice to add another little one to the population. And when they are born, they weigh between 25 and 50 kilograms. So quite hefty, even at birth. They will um, continue to suckle off the mother for about eight months as well. It could be a little bit more than that. But uh, that's generally... So we're hoping for another new little one come March next year. Right, I'm going to be sitting here, not moving much. Hopefully as that sun starts to dip, we're going to have more activity here. But speaking of activity, let's head on over to Liam on the move. Shall we try that again? So, my name is Liam Burrow. I'm the fortunate naturalist here in the driver's seat on uh, Wendy this afternoon. The man behind the lens is BK Uhuru. Uh, we are hopeful uh, that uh, <laughs> all of this message has gone through. And um, wonderful to have you all along for the ride this afternoon. Let's see what it holds in store for us. This is going to be my final sunset safari with Wild Earth for a while. So uh, we better make it count. I think BK and I are feeling extremely lucky. It's already off to a good start. We did a little bit of birding. We're now enjoying some sun and a bumble into the west.
We protect and reconnect nature across Southern Africa. We bring countries together to care for wild spaces that stretch beyond borders. We protect and restore biodiversity. We prioritize the people living in these landscapes, enabling them to thrive in harmony with nature. We are restoring tomorrow. Hey, Kenneth, I don't, think, um, I don't think their blood is uh, necessarily cold, but um, they are what we call ectothermic. Um, so basically ectothermic taken from Greek. Um, ecto meaning um, outside and thermic meaning temperature. So what we can take from that is uh, they need an external source of heat to regulate their own body temperature. Uh, for most reptiles, that's obviously the sun. So, uh, yeah, reptiles will uh, bask to uh, increase their body temperature, speed up their metabolism, and um, use energy stored in their bodies from the sun to be active for a short time. But, obviously, that energy wears off, uh, almost like their uh, solar panel batteries start to get a little bit low. Uh, then they need to hide, kind of rest, and uh, hopefully recharge the next day with the sun. It's a bit challenging for them at this time of year because uh, we aren't getting a lot of heat um, and sun exposure is quite limited during the day. Our days are shorter, so much less likely to see uh, snakes, tortoises, that sort of thing. Having said that, we did actually have a tortoise come and visit us in, uh, in our little camp here at Wild Earth in Juma uh, <laughs> two days ago. Apparently it's a very well-known individual. I believe um, known as Gregory, but uh, it's a female, a little hingeback tortoise, and she came quite eagerly up to us. I think uh, she knew the deal, so we uh, very willingly offered her some strawberries, which is probably the tastiest thing she's had to eat in a few months. <laughs> she ate her strawberries and she went back into hiding. <laughs> So many reptiles in, um, in our area estivate. They don't quite hibernate like uh, animals do in the northern hemisphere uh, because we don't really freeze. But uh, yeah, they go sort of semi-dormant. Still potential for activity on a lovely warm day. Yeah, today is actually a pretty brilliant warm day. So who knows, there might even be a bit of reptile activity out there for us. If you would like to be a part of the team that shares the wildebeest migration in Kenya live on Wild Earth, then we have some great news for you. There are a few places left to join our expeditions in August and September this year. You'll be staying in an exclusive tented camp with ensuite bedrooms nestled in the riverine woodlands of the Talek River. Head over to our website to book your bucket list experience today. Wild Earth Expeditions. Travel with purpose. Here at Wild Earth, we want you to learn as much about the wild as possible. Sadly, we can't answer all the questions on Safari Live, so we've come up with a new way to solve the problem. I love answering your questions, and now I have the chance to answer even more. Sign up to be a Wild Earth Explorer, and you can join me on July the 6th after the Sunset Safari here at the beautiful Amakala Game Reserve. Have your questions ready. Wild Earth Explorers, it's in your nature. So uh, as we bumble in search of as much as possible this afternoon, um, let's head over to Lauren in the interim and uh, say good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. 
I can tell you it is not sunny and it is not warm here in Amakala Game Reserve in the Eastern Cape of South Africa. That's why the elephants that we are looking at or the mere fraction of elephants that we are looking at are hiding, which is what I would also like to be doing, but I'm not. I'm here with you guys. Good afternoon. My name is Lauren. Ah. Imagine if that wasn't Dobby's thumb, would you be worried? I think you would be, but it is Dobby's thumb, so we're all good. And apologies we weren't with you this morning, we were rained out completely rained out. The Eastern Cape sort of climate, if you like, is really interesting and it's quite unpredictable, the rainfall, I believe, and possibly becoming more unpredictable due to our change in climate. For the four years at least that I've been in South Africa, the climate has really changed and that's just the four years of my experience. South Africa is listed as one of the countries that is being heavily affected by climate change, but at least we've still got a lush environment in front of us. And here at Amakala, the sort of best season to come is actually the opposite of the low felt. For animal viewing, the best season is winter in the low felt. But here in Amakala, it's actually summer. Summer is the best time to come here. So we hope we can stay with you as long as possible, as long as it doesn't sort of... Well, as long as there is no torrential downpour, we'll stay out with you guys. And this is the herd of elephants that I've been wanting to meet for quite some time. But I'm just not getting to spend too much time with them. There is only one main herd on the reserve and five male elephants that are all identified with all unique personalities, and we have made a few of them. One in particular that seems to be full of absolute nonsense, and he did try to push over our car. So we have learned that he needs a little bit more distance. He's not an elephant you want to meet on a dark night. So I don't really have any plans. Do you think these Ellies are making their way down, Dove? <laughs> no, no. They're going to stay in the thicket. They get shelter. They get maybe not warm, but the wind isn't hitting them. So it probably is a little bit warmer in there. I love all the bird calls here. So different from the Lovelt. Momo, hello, hello. Yes, it is the perfect vegetation for the camera shy elephants. <laughs> They're not normally camera shy, that's the thing. But today it's just, this is what happens. When the weather gets like this, animals do also seek shelter, just like we do. I didn't want to leave my bed. That electric blanket, mm, I'm never going back ever to a normal bed. I used to have electric blankets as a childhood, in, as, in my childhood. I don't know why I just forgot about them. But no more. Electric blankets will be part of my life. But we may sit here just a moment or two, see if the elephants do pop out. They might. Patience pays off in the bush. But before I do forget, tomorrow night is very special, everyone. I will be doing the Ask Me Anything. I'm a little bit nervous. What are you guys going to ask me? Please think up a few for Davi too, so that the pressure is bloody shaking his head, but I mean it. And yes, tomorrow night after the sunset safari. So we will naturally finish the sunset safari a little bit earlier because the sun goes down and we don't operate in the light. Quickly run home, get ready. And yes, please, please. Join us if you're a wild earth explorer and have your questions ready. I'm actually really excited. It will take place inside the camp that we are living and that is Woodbury, Woodbury Tented Camp. It's a gorgeous camp. So we'll be sitting in the dining room answering all of your questions. Okay, I think we are just going to sit tight and just wait and see if they do emerge from the thicket. But we're going to send you over to Cedric, who is on the move. Yes, I'm uh, hoping that 
uh, Lauren gets to see those uh, elephants and uh, unfortunately I did not get to see any of uh, Columbus clubs there on uh, New Orleans South. I don't know, I think they might still be there or they're gone. Didn't see any other tracks around there but on top of that I am on Central and we did discover that African Hawk Eagles nest uh, a couple of days ago. So I am going to that tree, we're right here now, that's in front of us and I just want to see if any of uh, the adults are here. That's my favorite eagle so and they've been back and forth and I'll see if we can get a nice sh shot of the nest of the African hawk eagle's nest. I don't know if there's anything in there, it doesn't look like it, eh? but they are using it. Can I go a bit more? We will be better that side, yeah? Further up. yeah I think I'd Let's go up a little bit further up here. We're just going to take a nice view of it and show you how the nest looks. It's quite a scraggly nest, not the most prettiest of nests. Um, but a lot of really thick branches that they do utilize. Oh, that sun is going to be in our eyes. So, But anyway, let's try it. Let's take a chance. Let's do it. We can do it. All right, I'm just going to go past this tree. Just, yeah. Here we are. Boom shakalaka. Here at Wild Earth, we promised great monthly prizes for our explorers, and this month is no exception. If you join our club before the 10th of July, then you stand a chance to win a fabulous Safari Guide online course brought to you by Bushwise Field Guides. They specialize in accredited Safari Guide training with courses tailored for the African Safari Lodge industry. Sign up to be a Wild Earth Explorer today and don't miss out on this life-changing opportunity. It's time to put your feet up after a long week. Wild Earth invites you to unwind with a weekend at the waterhole, our life source of the bush, home to so much joy and danger. Join us on the 9th and 10th of July to get your wildlife refill broadcasted to you live all weekend at the waterhole. Gemma, yes, uh, they would. Uh, they would. Some other species will sometimes utilize other uh, birds' nests if they're not around anymore, uh, especially in the eagle families as well. So you'll find that sometimes even the batelier and, for instance, um, let me take a look, batelier tawny eagle as well. So they will sometimes, if the batelier is not there anymore and it's not utilizing, the uh, tawny eagle will take that opportunity and maybe like just, you know, do a little bit of renovation on the nest itself and then, of course, you use that nest if nobody else is home. But this African hawk eagle's nest, <coughs> I haven't seen anything else using it, just African hawk eagles. So, um, but it is so nice to see them being, ar being around here. And uh, in Afrikaans, we call it a groot jach arend, means a big hunting eagle. That's a, like that's a direct translation to, to the Afrikaans uh, name because they're often middleable hunters. Uh, go for things like uh, guinea fowl, uh, they love guinea fowl, uh, franklins, even uh, if they can find a scrub air during the daytime. So yes, they are formidable hunters, African hawk eagle. That's a very pretty. Um, I'll give you quickly a photo of one of them. I'll quickly go run through my book here. Do, 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 do. Here it is. Okay, I'm going to show you. Let's uh, see if Johan can get the camera onto uh, this page and it's this one here yeah. African hawk eagle just you can see it is such a stunning bird with that beautiful b b black and black like kind of speckles on the chest and uh, it looks like really like a I can I say like a fighter pilot very very serious look to the bird beautiful dark black wings white underpart of the speckles and a nice orange orange eye and uh, they are stunning. And the female and the male are monogamous, so they're partners for life. I mean, the female is larger than the male. And how they hunt is, of course, is uh, the one will kind of become like a, a, deco a, a dummy, and uh, the other one will kind of get the attention of uh, the guinea fowl, and the other one will come from behind and surprise them and catch them like that. So formidable hunters, African hawk eagle. But we are going to look for them now. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry about that, yeah. 
one. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, we're gonna <laughs> stick it. They usually sit up this side as well. So I'm gonna see if I can get one for you guys and uh, let's take a look. Anyway, while well, we're gonna go and search for this African hawk eagle, let's uh, head back to Lauren. She's doing some birding herself. I'm trying to do some birding, Cedric. It's actually not easy here. But this is a bird I haven't put on camera before. And this is a cape weaver. So in Juma, we used to look at the, the village weaver, the spectacled weaver sometimes, the southern masked, the lesser masked, but this is a cape weaver, which, I mean, I think you would still be able to tell it's a weaver by the body shape, the coloration, See, all weavers are very similar. However, this is a cape weaver. Now, have you still got them, Don? Yep. <laughs> Sorry, I don't have a monitor. I want to try and describe to you which one's a male and which one's female. Okay, the one at the very top, at the edge of the branch, with a really chestnutty, bright orange face, is the male. Well, actually, they might both be males. Females, as with all weavers, are less spectacular in their coloration and this is because the evolutionary drive for females is to be the choosers the males are the ones that have got to display they've got to look fantastic they've got to put energy into attracting the females and it's fascinating because a long time ago especially in the age of charles darwin female choice wasn't given a second thought it wasn't thought to be anything it was all about the males males are driving evolutionary change in terms of sexual selection but actually female choice is what drives everything males are doing all these things for the females and who's the one that gets to pick at the end of the day it's the ladies the ladies don't need to worry about color and looking fancy and dancing and putting on their makeup do they it really is the males that need to impress so I think that might have been two males. That really lovely reddish color face. They're gorgeous birds. But we have not been doing too well on the birding. <laughs> so we're starting. Lily, I love the, the little red face as well. It's really striking against the yellow. Two primary colors that you wouldn't really, well, I personally wouldn't put together. But striking all the same. And they are quite common here. They're just not so common to get on camera. Have they disappeared? For the most part. For the most part. <laughs> we have a huge long list of birds, really spectacular birds here that we want to show you guys. But we'll have to try a little bit harder. Wild Earth's weekend at the waterhole is going to be epic. And we want to make sure that you are kitted out for the occasion. We've launched some wonderful merchandise just for you. Are you a damn cam lover? Find these and more on our website. So get your snacks ready, put your feet up and join us for a weekend at the waterhole. bear the rain as much as we can. Light drops are fine. Torrential downpours that are not. So we might actually try and do some birding. Let's see how that goes today. And as we do our best, we're going to send you over to Ralph on the Juma Cam. Ah, uh, yes, the Eastern Cape, where you can have four seasons in one day. When you go back to Lauren, it might be bright sunshine after the little rain she's had. But, um, yes, I've managed to find the monitor lizards on a log, and, well, maybe it's not such a bad thing that we can't get perfect focus there. Doing 
something similar to what the hippos were doing. So it seems they're all at it. Um, and monitor lizards, obviously, being reptiles, they do lay eggs. So it, if this is successful, it won't be too long, and she'll be finding somewhere to dig a nice big hole. She'll lay the eggs in the hole, and in about four months' time of incubation, the young will emerge from the hole. So there's not parental care. That is exclusive to crocodiles. So the Nile crocodile is one of the only reptiles that perform parental care. Um, and what she does is she waits in the area of the eggs and when they make their characteristic noise, which I'll try to do, it's a funny little noise like that. And then she will open the hole, gather up all the little young in her mouth and take them down to the water, normally at a well-chosen site where the, it is nicely protected and there's also lots of little tadpoles and small fish and all sorts of things that the little ones can feed on and she'll protect the area as well. Monitor lizards, however, are left to fend for themselves. So, Cleo, yep, agreed. Must be something in the air. Like I say, everybody's at it. And, um, well, it's this time of year. So the timing then does coincide normally with the onset of rain. So that is the sort of thinking as to the period of time when these animals start pairing up and then the resulting young will um, come about around that time. So the same with the impala who are also now all rutting and trying to sort out the dominance so that they can take up the females. And um, yes, well, mating monitor lizards, another first for me. I've seen snakes and all sorts of reptiles doing it, but um, never have I seen monitor lizards mating. So wonderful. You can spend a life in the bush and still not see uh, certain events. Wild Earth have really inspired me to return to South Africa after having followed so many beautiful characters. This Ticket to Dream has given me a great opportunity to meet the Wild Earth team, which I thank. They're all amazing. Well, I love all of the characters, but I do have a particular passion for leopards. It's, it's a dream, and as I said before, I just keep on pinching myself, am I really here? If you would like to be a part of the team that shares the wildebeest migration in Kenya live on Wild Earth, then we have some great news for you. There are a few places left to join our expeditions in August and September this year. You'll be staying in an exclusive tented camp with ensuite bedrooms nestled in the riverine woodlands of the Talek River. Head over to our website to book your bucket list experience today. Wild Earth Expeditions. Travel with purpose. They're not very big as far as monitor lizards go, but they are rather sizable, and I'm sure they're still well over 10 kilograms. Very heavy. And the biggest weapon of a monitor lizard is their tail. Now, Chloe, good question. Which reptile moves the fastest? Well, the whip snakes are the fastest of the snakes, or the grass snakes. But snakes, they only have one lung, so they can't do it for very long. Now, monitor lizards can also move pretty fast, and so can crocodiles. So, jeepers, I've seen crocodiles really move fast. But that's a good question. Which one is the fastest of all? I wonder. I would say purely for their size, I'd put my money on crocodiles. But if you had to go for size ratio, 
Yeah, but anyway, I'd say overall a crocodile. He's the biggest. He's got the best potential to move quicker. He can cover bigger land. If you ever see a, a crocodile at full tilt, a big crocodile, they almost walk on air. A black mamba snake obviously also is capable of doing something like that. But um, yeah, as I've said, the whip snake's fastest of the snakes, and I would say crocodile. Now, I'm going to try and catch up with this little squirrel that is making a noise here. I wonder what he's up to. But uh, I hear that Cedric's off the vehicle. Yes, uh, that is so nice to see monitor lizards mating. That is very, very nice to see. I haven't seen that myself. But yes, I am sitting here at a mud wallow. This is now a proper mud wallow. If you're thinking about instant pudding, like you get that instant pudding, that uh, texture, that thickness, this is a typical uh, wallow. Now, not with water or anything, that's not a wallow. A wallow is where it's mud, where elephants, buffalo, rhino, warthogs, they'll take this mud and they'll cake themselves, of course, protect themselves from the elements, from the sun, and of course, as well, from parasites and that, they'll cake themselves and suffocate all those parasites under the mud. But anyway, I want to just show you how thick this is. As I say, it is like instant pudding. Now, this is like where, if you're looking at that, that is proper wallow material. So this is something that I think I would definitely look into jumping into one day, very soon, I think, because this is nice. Look, one thing about it, if you get it on your skin, give and take, even can ask Igor as well. We did it, but we actually both we did this, and we took the mud and put it on our face and on our arms. It really makes your skin so smooth, so so smooth. And I think it's uh, definitely um, a wallow that I enjoy. So I think I'm looking around, there is bird tracks here, but it's difficult to see because of it's so thick. There is some bird tracks around here. So I wonder if it's not. Maybe it looks like for a hardy dog. Uh, ibis that came here, but it's definitely something that got itself uh, stuck in uh, this mud. But uh, I'm also looking around to see if maybe a warthog or anything has come here, but nothing else has come around to this water. But I want to see how far and deep this goes. So this is, okay, so it's not so deep. See, uh, okay, uh, nah, it's not so deep. That's not deep. So definitely, I think. Uh, I think I'd like to see old Chris jump into a water. That would be funny. <laughs> I know Chris would do it. <laughs> but uh, a water like this, yeah. So I'm going to just take a little bit of this mud. But it's, yeah, it's okay. It is very, not as manky as the other one I saw the other day. And usually this, I just want to try it out again this afternoon. Just a little bit on the skin. Let's just see. Because it is quite warm today. So I'm just going to give myself a little bit of a... Uh, some mud spa treatment here and I'll see how this works okay there we go so give and take let's see I think say about 10 minutes time 10 15 minutes we'll see how this goes and I'll actually scrape off the mud and I'll actually tell you that uh, <laughs> my skin is nice and smooth or if I've lost most of my skin I doubt it I don't think the latter but uh, yeah let's take a look here at Wild Earth, we want you to learn as much about the wild as possible. Sadly, we can't answer all the questions on Safari Live, so we've come up with a new way to solve the problem. I love answering your questions, and now I have the chance to answer even more. Sign up to be a Wild Earth Explorer, and you can join me on July the 6th after the Sunset Safari here at the beautiful Amakala Game Reserve. Have your questions ready. Wild Earth Explorers, it's in your nature. Hi, I am David. I come to you live from the Mana Triangle all the way from Kenya. This is not a postcard. This is real. Sunrise in the beautiful Maasai Mara. I 
finished with my my little bit of a game here. Let's see how it goes. Uh, let's head over to Ralph to see how's it going at the dam cam. Thanks, Cedric. I, I always love getting in the mud. It's always lovely. Nice. And where I live in Port Alfred, we have a, a very nice uh, river running through the town called the Cowie River, but uh, it has mud banks. And myself and my kids, we love going and playing in the mud. But uh, it's a very messy job cleaning up afterwards. So just having a look at these hippos, which I don't think are in the mud, but they might be pretty close. Seems they've calmed down now with the Egyptian geese. Now also just um, relaxing with them on the shoreline. I'm hearing some ox peckers, which I'm thinking could potentially be some animals coming in. So let's just zoom out again and see if we can spot any game. Maybe some impala or giraffe. Let's just pan across. Slowly but surely. Where are these ox peckers calling from? From over this side. Don't see any animals yet. Let's just do a little pan there. So nice to have the hippos back. At least there's always some kind of noise in the background. No, nothing there. Let's go look on the other side. Go right across. Georgie, uh, that depends on the size of the animal. So a little squirrel has got very high blood pressure, whereas an elephant has lower blood pressure, or giraffe has lower blood pressure. So, But it all depends as far as I know, according to the size of the animal. So the smaller the animal, the higher the blood pressure and the higher the, the heart rate as well. Um, and that's why the smaller animals also don't live as long because their heart can't keep up. And animals like predators, they also will have a high heart rate and I would assume coupled with the high blood pressure um, during the heat of the day or when it's very hot and that's what makes them very lethargic um, around the heat and that's why they come out at night uh, not only for that reason, but because it's cooler. Obviously, they want to hunt in the hours of darkness, so it helps um, to be able to catch their prey. But in the heat of the day, they do struggle. So that's why you just find them relaxing up in the shade. So I was checking in with the parrots. Here on Wild Earth, we love it when you interact with our guides while they are live. In order to do this, you must head over to wildearth.tv forward slash questions and submit your questions, comments and suggestions. Simple as that. And to make it even simpler, from time to time you will see a QR code on your screen. Open your camera phone and scan this code and it will take you straight to where you need to be. We look forward to answering your questions on this channel. Here at Wild Earth, we promised great monthly prizes for our explorers, and this month is no exception. If you join our club before the 10th of July, then you stand a chance to win a fabulous Safari Guide online course brought to you by Bushwise Field Guides. They specialize in accredited Safari Guide training with courses tailored for the African Safari Lodge industry. Sign up to be a Wild Earth Explorer today and don't miss out on this life-changing opportunity. Beautiful colors and doing a lot of feather maintenance, regular feather maintenance, as do most birds. 
Harriet, yes. Birds, when they when they hatch, they normally have very thick, well, not thick, but very soft down feathers. Um, and being in a nest, depending on what kind of nest you're in, they also don't want to be taking up too much space, but they want to be insulated from the elements. So the feathers are very downy, and then they will molt those feathers, which is drop them off and grow new ones and slowly but surely they will turn into the adult feathers and then seasonally birds will also drop their feathers molt between winter and summer so in winter they don't need to have the extravagant colors that they would require in spring for attracting mates or whatever the case may be uh, or have a flashy long tail like in the case of a paradise flycatcher um, they will have that they will molt that in spring and then at the end of spring once they've achieved their goal of getting mates and they will drop those feathers as well and molt in for the next cycle so they lose them quite regularly and hence why you often find different feathers all over the place and it's not a problem it's like losing your hair so, and it is literally modified hair. You have the same kind of hair follicles as you do on your head, on a bird. And if you look at a feather closely, you can actually see where it was attached at the base. And there's a drongo. There's lots of drongos around the pan, all coming in, swooping in and around hawking catching insects and all sorts they're on the move we're stationary but i hear liam's also on the move some really fantastic birding and um, reptile activity there around the pan with rock very cool stuff in uh, the bumble goes very well for uh, BK and myself as well. Uh, we did see a large herd of elephants, but unfortunately they were disappearing off into Little Gauri. That's all good. Uh, we will hopefully track down um, another set. Yeah, such a nice sunny afternoon. It isn't too hot, not too cold. It is just right. We are gradually making our way into the southeast uh, where we hope to cross over to Chitwa and pick up on a little bit of that predator activity from this morning. But uh, let's see how we go. We obviously want to time it quite right if we can. Uh, we don't want to get there too early and just have uh, sleeping cats. Leonard, that is a pretty excellent question. Um, I'm going to have to get quite creative with my answer. I think it would be something like an otter. I think uh, otters are supposed to have some ridiculously dense fur. Um, I believe they were quite seriously hunted um, in the northern hemisphere for many, many years uh, for their little skins. Although people are not really, to my knowledge, killing them anymore. Um, yeah, I would think that our uh, our Cape Clawless Otter would have seriously dense fur. It's not really adapted to icy conditions like uh, sea otters in the Northern Hemisphere, but there would be a need for that fur to be dense, insulating, and um, quite water repellent. So uh, my best guess, yeah, would be an otter.
It's time to put your feet up after a long week. Wild Earth invites you to unwind with a weekend at the waterhole, our life source of the bush, home to so much joy and danger. Join us on the 9th and 10th of July to get your wildlife refill broadcasted to you live all weekend at the Waterhole. Wild Earth's Weekend at the Waterhole is going to be epic and we want to make sure that you are kitted out for the occasion. We've launched some wonderful merchandise just for you. Are you a damn cam lover? Find these and more on our website. So get your snacks ready, put your feet up and join us for a weekend at the waterhole. So, um, I'm hearing some whispers that a fellow naturalist here in the Sabi Sands, Cedric, may have crossed paths with a rather large herd of something. So, uh, let's check in with him and see what's up on his end. Yes, I just uh, had uh, two male buffaloes and now unfortunately they ran into the bush. They're very nervous. I don't know why, I've, but they ran quite uh, quite quickly back into the thicker thickets and all that. Now, it sounds, looks like they might be going to one of these wallows here. The same as me that I was uh, wallowing. <laughs> Let's see if we can try and get them that side. I'm hoping that they are going to shoot around to one of these little pens here. Let's try and sneak around and just see what they're going to do. But it is two. One uh, looks like an old male with a younger male, but let's hope we can get them in uh, frame. And uh, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Of course, my uh, mud is starting to dry. It feels like I've uh, got stiff arms at the moment, very stiff arms. But yeah, I'm going to definitely rub, off, um, rub the mud off uh, shortly and feel if my skin is going to be nice and smooth. Thank you very much. Yes, I'm definitely having a spy day. Well, it was a lovely day for a spy day. So, yeah, no, definitely. Thanks, Lana. Just uh, need to get some hot uh, hot stones and put some stones in the sun. Oh, yeah, they're going to come across here. I think they're going to head towards Chilapan. These two male buffaloes. It looks like they want to go to Chilapan, which is not too far in front of us here. Okay, that one's going to come onto the road now. Nice big old male. And just see that dewlap on him, big body. Uh, he's heading straight towards him. The younger one, there's a younger male that is following. Usually those younger males won't be with these older males like that. Sometimes you'll find that those younger males are most of the time uh, with uh, the breeding herd. Okay, let's get to Chilapan. Well, we had, that, uh, we had a herd of buffalo around on Weaver's Nest this morning, so I wonder if they're not broken. Maybe the rest is coming. Maybe, uh, maybe the rest of the herd is somewhere here in the thickets, but we'll follow up on that. Okay, I'm just going to stop here, because these two guys aren't uh, relaxed at all. They're very nervous, so I'm trying to keep my distance from them at this point in time, because it seems like they keep on, they keep on running uh, from us. I might just want to see where they're going. Looks like they're heading in towards the Molawati area. Uh, George, yes, buffalo. Oh, yeah, they are the, the tanks of the bush to me. They are the ones that you do not want to walk into and uh, need to keep a close eye, especially when you're doing bushwalks and you're around the lodges and all that. I know Chris and Paul was pretty much uh, harassed by some buffalo the other day in the Pridelands. <laughs> and I can just imagine Chris in the tent with his buffalo bumping against his tent. <laughs> I can't imagine Christmas was like a, an elbow or something. He's like, hey. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, buffaloes you don't want to mess with. It's not a, it's not an animal that you want to get uh, involved uh, on foot with. Uh, definitely. All right, I'm just going to go to Chilapans. If not, I'm going to head around towards Pangolin, Pangolin Road or Pangolin Track. 
just want to maybe see if we can follow up on the rest because I want to see why these guys are so nervous. Something has made them nervous. I did have those lions calling this morning towards Mumba Road. So a lot is happening, but we just have to try and work out exactly the, the, whole, the whole story behind uh, the behavior at this uh, time. So you know, take a look. They're not going to go to Chelapan. No, they're going to go straight to Mulawati. I think they're heading directly that side. I don't see nothing here. If you would like to be a part of the team that shares the wildebeest migration in Kenya live on Wild Earth, then we have some great news for you. There are a few places left to join our expeditions in August and September this year. You'll be staying in an exclusive tented camp with ensuite bedrooms nestled in the riverine woodlands of the Talek River. Head over to our website to book your bucket list experience today. Wild Earth Expeditions. Travel with purpose. Here at Wild Earth, we want you to learn as much about the wild as possible. Sadly, we can't answer all the questions on Safari Live, so we've come up with a new way to solve the problem. I love answering your questions, and now I have the chance to answer even more. Sign up to be a Wild Earth Explorer, and you can join me on July the 6th after the Sunset Safari here at the beautiful Amakala Game Reserve. Have your questions ready. Wild Earth Explorers, it's in your nature. Look at this. Yo, this female has got huge horns. Yes, I just found the buffaloes here on Pangolin Track. I'd want to say there might have been other buffaloes around. Uh, female just went into the thickets now. Very long horns. And of course, uh, uh, like a, a juvenile, I won't call him a calf. Oh, I think this one in front of us is a juvenile buffalo. You can see those little horns are coming through already. But not a big herd. I don't think it's the same herd that. Uh, a Liam had, I think, around, where was it, Biffelzook Dam? Saw it. I think it might be a little of a smaller herd, yeah. Lovely. Of course, strictly grazers, so they'll move through the areas, and of course, they're led usually by your old, older females, I call them the pathfinders, so they will usually lead these herds to the next areas for grazing. And of course, uh, flanked by older males and bigger males, and that's well, kind of trailed by bigger males to defend the herd and keep the calves really more in the center of these herds. And they are going to go to Chilipan now. I think what we should do, we should actually, It'll be nice if they come there, but there is water there, so I think they've really, there's a little mud while it's on Pangolin track that's just to the left of us here. And I think a lot of them are already in that water, busy drinking and having their daily dose of water. Anyway, while well, we're going to sit and see what's happening with uh, this herd of uh, buffalo, let's head back to Liam as he's heading on to Chitwa. So uh, BK and myself are here on old access at Chitra with an enormous must bull elephant. Uh, as we came past, uh, at a bit of a distance, he gave us a bit of a rush through the trees. So we're uh, giving him a lot of space and uh, just seeing kind of what he's up to. He is a big boy, uh, probably about six tons, 35 years of age and off his head with testosterone. In his present state, uh, very unpredictable, not behaving like the usual gentleman that a large elephant bull actually is. There's quite a few other Ellies coming through the block. I'm hopeful we'll get them splashing at this little wallow. We'll try and improve the view if this must bull moves off. But we do not want to have Wendy carried off into the bush by this big guy, so we won't be getting too close. He looks like he's moving back a bit. Yeah, so must is a period of heightened reproductive activity uh, for male elephants. Happens very regularly. 
Jason, quite wisely, um, yes, very much so. We there. Not worth poking the bear, as they say. Things could get very messy. Yeah, and then uh, he will transition out of this must bull phase and just become a nice, gentle elephant bull again. Very approachable, uh, nice and um, gentle around the cows and calves. It's just sort of a, a passing uh, hormonal phase that they go through. Happens to all mature bulls, all bulls past uh, sort of puberty. He is a man on a mission. Look at all his body language. He's just out there looking to mess something up, break a tree, push something over. Uh, but apparently all of that is quite impressive to females. Pull forward a bit. We're still sitting on Pangolin track. Uh, uh, we're looking at uh, this beautiful buffalo herd that's coming through, maybe heading towards Chilapan. A lot of oxbeckers around as well. Of course, they do follow these buffaloes. Perfect for feeding off all the parasites on the buffaloes. So sometimes I uh, keep a close eye out on uh, which oxbeckers we're looking at. Most of, uh, or the most common one, of course, is the Red Bull, but let's take a look if I'm gonna find, get my bifocals out. Oh, there's zebra there in the background as well. Hey, you see there? Oh, we can just barely see them, but it's amazing. They are black and white, so you would think you'd see them easy, but then, yeah, no, it's going to the left. Yo, yo, there's two males that's fighting, sorry. There's two male buffaloes that's fighting. Check, 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 check. Check, check. There, there, there. Yo! I've just got to make sure I'm not going to be in the way. Okay. I'm just going to make sure my vehicle's ready to go. Because I'll run straight into this vehicle and knock us right over if that has to. Check, they've got their horns interlocked now. Look at all those flies. So this is how they create dominance in these uh, breeding herds. That one's a little bit more submissive now. Pushed off. Uh, let's see if it's. Mm. There's a lot of a uh, lot of testosterone going around, yeah. And this guy is coming straight towards us. It was just in the sparring session. There's a lot of nerves, high tension in this breeding unit at the moment because of these, the sparring with these males. Yeah, they come. Yeah, they come to the, these two. So this one here yeah, that we're looking at now is the one that was pretty much the dominant one over the, the other male that's just walked away. So definitely he is very, very dominant in this uh, breeding herd and we'll get definitely, like uh, I can say, mating rights when it comes to females that's in heat. Wow. The Masai Mara in Kenya, a remote landscape where wilderness reigns. Its inspirational beauty captivates the hearts of many around the world. This year, from August, Wild Earth is leading a number of unique expeditions to follow Africa's greatest wildebeest migration here in the Masai Mara. And now, the remaining places have been discounted by 20%. Head over to our website to find out. We want to make it even easier for you to interact with our guides whilst watching Wild Earth. 
when you see a QR code like this pop up on your screen, then open your phone camera, point it at the code, and you will be taken directly to our question page. Simple as that. Then you can let us know what you want to see, ask questions, and much more. I've had it before where I've been walking and the water bucks jumped out of the grass. It's quite a frightening experience. Wild Earth, it's in your nature. But the whole idea for, for that sparring is just to create the dominance in the, this breeding herd. So yeah, there's nothing else really shown. It's just mainly for the mating rights to, to you know, kind of uh, spread that one's genes. So it's to show other males, and especially the male, that it was competing again. And it's like, if there is going to be a female that's in heat, well, just remember, I was more dominant over you when we had that sparring se uh, uh, session, and um, I will have uh, I will have that uh, mating rights before you. So, so yeah, that is the main, main purpose of it. Uh, so yeah, did you hear the was in Paul alarm calling? Wow, around Chilapan is so much happening. I don't even know which way to look. We've got this herd of buffaloes. We've got these two zebras coming down at buffaloes sparring. I've got impalas alarm calling just north of me. So definitely it's a place to be right now. And it looks like quite a big herd because there's quite a few that's still coming through on Pangolin Road. So I thought it wasn't that big, but it's a large, large herd. And you never know, maybe lions are trailing them. Maybe there's a lion that's trailing them. Because uh, maybe the Telemartis, it'll be fantastic. I don't know where they ended up, but uh, it'll be great to see some lions behind them. Anyway, well, we're going to continue investigating around this area where, these, uh, where this herd of buffaloes are. I think uh, let's head over to Chris and see what's happening in Brightlands. Right, so we are following these lines, tracks, and we bumped into some ellies. And I've seen three at least, and I just want to make sure it's not a breeding herd, then we'll quick, quickly extract what we're good for now. Just see glimpses of them through the bush there. So I obviously need to keep very quiet. They are moving that way. But yeah, we're walking this block. This is where the last track to the lines went into. Okay, it looks like a couple of young bulls. You can literally just see the grey bodies move through the bush. Okay, it's very dense here, so I don't think we should stick around for too long. Because they, I can't see what's happening there. Alright, and they are moving parallel to us. So I think let's move a bit higher. Let's move a bit higher. Follow me, guys. So we don't want to get caught in the middle of the herd. There's one right at you. This guy's close. You can see him just moving away in the bush here. It looks like a couple of bulls, but terrain's not good for a closer approach than this. And the wind's now going to turn towards them. If they move any further that way, we got going towards them. And never a good thing. Now they're coming this way. Might get a brief visual here. I think they're going to come into the open. There they are, there they are. You can see them right there. There they are. Let's give you one last glimpse before we extract. It's about 80 meters from us. Okay, I'm just going to create a bit of space between us in order to get better terrain. This terrain is not the greatest, it's too dense. 
Anyway, let's uh, head over to Cedric in the meantime. I'm just uh, quickly turning around here. We are still with this herd of uh, buffalo. Uh, I just stopped again. These two, uh, sorry, sorry about that, uh, Johan. Yeah, we just had uh, these two males again. I think these big boys, we call, uh, we call them dugger boys, muddy boys, because they love rolling in the mud and that. And uh, it seemed like there was a little bit of grunting and, and snorting and going on again. So I think that's what I say there. So. Definitely a lot of testosterone in this herd. That's going, you can see there. And that poor boy's been bullied around a bit, eh? I think he was the one that once on the left hand side, he was the one that was having a bit of a, a spar, sparring session with, I think, the male that's just gone down to the water. I think they've got a true star in that agreement. And it looks like they definitely don't want to have a bit of a fight again. But yes, what? What fantastic thing. Now you can just see that, uh, that, that power. You can understand why the male's boss, we call it a boss, the horns, is so thick. And that's why you always see them like rubbing it against uh, bushes and uh, branches and all that. It's really just to kind of strengthen that, uh, that boss. And there's a keratin. And uh, once a keratin gets nice and so it's like almost like a, like a callus. And the more you drive, the more you play tennis or whatever, you get those calluses on your hands. It's the same as their, their horns. Yeah, and uh, I get it nice and thick. Uh, male buffalo are busy wallowing that side in that mud. I'm, as, I'm busy smearing my mud off. But, um, we are wallowed earlier. <laughs> it's not really working well, but anyway. <laughs> I'm trying my best. Yeah. <sighs> okay, well, I won't say that the skin is much smoother, um, but I think it is, it feels, it smells normal. It smells like mud, but that is, huh? You want to give it to Should I take a feel? No, 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 feel it. Do you think it's a little bit smoother? A little bit, huh? Feel it before. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't hear. <laughs> yeah, no, well. <laughs> well, I'll continue to try and remove this mud off. Let's head over to Chris and see what's happening with these elephants. <laughs> got into a much better position now so our wind is still going that way so they are moving in that direction so what we're doing I'm just using this little apex of this little rise here and the grass to hide myself uh, got a good background with the Sun so it's only the wind we need to keep monitoring but this is a good sighting they are eating so you're not impacting them they probably don't know we are if they know we are which Unlikely, they're happy with our presence. Somebody asked me this morning, what do I look forward to when I'm going out into the bush? This is it. That's tracking stuff on foot. Okay, I didn't track these elephants. I encountered them, but still makes every bush walk so much more if you do encounter these things. Note my movements are very slow and no fast movements. So 
I just want to check that nothing is surprising us. Okay, I'm just going to, I'm struggling to sit. I'm just going to move behind this. You can stay there. You're well hidden. And it's young bulls as well, so if they do react negatively, they often won't follow through on charges. But what a privilege. Okay, we'll need to keep moving with them. We'll probably I still can't believe the amount of ox peckers on this poor, poor hippopotamus. Almost more ox pecker than skin at the moment. They do seem to be retreating now it's heading into the water. Maybe that's what you should have done first there. Wow, they really are. That's an effective method there, hippopotamus. Well done. And oh, they go. <laughs> They're in. While we wait for these elephants to emerge, they're going to come out now. Ian's wanna, Ian wants to know if there's a grass height that I won't walk into or try and avoid on bushwalk. Ian, this grass level is fine because essentially, uh, unless it's a lion sleeping or a leopard, you can see relatively well. But the moment we start talking about, I would say, this length, that's stuff that I don't want to be walking in. Because everything other than a rhino and elephant, you will not see them. And they'll, you'll get them here, close to you. This grass is borderline where I would walk, but there's enough short bits and bobs on it. Also, this is a relatively open area um, for us to move in. Very, very, very relevant question, like it. Okay, let's just move up onto this rise. I can still hear them there. And this is a good setup. We see here how we've got these little flattened areas, which is fine. Constantly while I'm walking, constantly looking for structure, should they charge us like this tree that we can get behind. All right, seems like they've changed direction. We're gonna just assess and see if there is another view or we might extract, but otherwise let's head over to Rolf in the meantime while we try and reposition. Well, I know exactly what Chris means when he says he doesn't like or doesn't walk through grass higher than his waist. Uh, I've had to walk through grass higher than my waist many times. One of them is in the Makuleki concession of the northern Kruger National Park. And crossing the floodplains there is um, something to get your pressure, your blood pressure going. And I've had to do it a few times. And once we actually came across a small bachelor herd or a group of dugger boys that were just literally about 10 feet away from us. And uh, that was one of the most hairy situations I've ever had. But uh, luckily we all got out safe and my backup rifle was absolutely fantastic. A British man from the UK and he was on my shoulder, perfect on time, and off he went on my instruction and got everybody to safety. But it is not uh, something to be recommended, walking in long grass. Sometimes it's unavoidable, as we watch this Nyala bull walking through the background there. I remember Nyala are the sort of cutoff point between ram and ewe or bull and cow. The Nyala male is a bull, but the female is a ewe. 
because he is over 100 kilograms, over 120 kilograms, and the female only comes in at about 60. So he's a lot bigger than her. And that's where we normally say over 120 kilograms. That's where you then speak of bull and cows. So it's all to do with the size more than anything else. If anybody was wondering. And you see with Nyala as well, when they're young, very difficult to tell male and female. It's only once they start growing a little bit that the males start to obviously get the little horns um, and then they start changing a complete transformation and into that very dark color that they have with the white mane and very different to the female and also very different to what they looked like when they were very small. They all look like females when they're very young. We protect and reconnect nature across Southern Africa. We bring countries together to care for wild spaces that stretch beyond borders. We protect and restore biodiversity. We prioritize the people living in these landscapes, enabling them to thrive in harmony with nature. We are restoring tomorrow. If you would like to be a part of the team that shares the wildebeest migration in Kenya live on Wild Earth, then we have some great news for you. There are a few places left to join our expeditions in August and September this year. You'll be staying in an exclusive tented camp with ensuite bedrooms nestled in the riverine woodlands of the Talek River. Head over to our website to book your bucket list experience today. Wild Earth Expeditions. Travel with purpose. Fana, which bird call is the favorite to imitate? Um, I don't know. I don't have a favorite. I can do quite a few different bird calls. Listen there, there's a pearl spotted owlet calling now. But I'm going to try, and I don't want to hurt your ears, but I do want to try to do the African fish eagle. How's that one? Not too bad. Yeah, okay. Maybe not so good, but not far off. I like that one. I like the African fish eagle. So, what's your favorite bird call, Fana? As I'm trying to find these green wood hoopers. Righty, so I'm going to continue trying to find some more birds here. But it seems like Cedric has found those buffalo that were with us this morning. Ah, it's nice. I'm glad uh, Ralph has also got a, a knack for whistling, whistling like a bird. But that is cool. Very nice, very nice. Ralph. Well, I am sitting uh, still with these buffaloes, uh, still here on Pangolin Track. There, are, there is so many. I think I miscalculated uh, this herd. I thought it was a small herd. I said earlier right in the beginning. But I think this herd is definitely over about 150, 200. So about 200 of them in this herd. So it is quite a substantial size herd. And they're all moving, uh, it seems like they were going to Chilapan, but it seems like they are changing a, a direction, maybe heading a little bit more away from Pangolin Road, going like in a, oh, it was going first east, now they're coming west, oh, no, no, then it now it looks like going south, so that's all over the show. But yeah, we will take a look around here. I'm going to shoot around to the hyena den very shortly from here. I'm going to go and find out uh, which characters are at the den site, who's at home. And uh, we'll take it from there. But it is nice just to witness these beautiful buffaloes, Cape buffaloes, moving through this area. And I'm hoping, as I said, I am hoping that he's going to bring those telemates here as an 
Un Kumas on C12, quite far and twisted. Oh, a little bit of a disagreement there. Alrighty then, I think uh, let's uh, on y va, on y va, s'il vous plaît. Let's go. Let's go in French. That's only really French I can speak, so. Let's do it. Let's go to Hyena Den. I'm going to quickly make sure that the guys know that I am coming around them and see if anybody and any of the characters are by the den. You never know, maybe you've got the uh, lions coming through here because we're going to go exactly where those buffalo come, where those buffaloes, uh, came from, uh, from the western side. You never know. Always expect the unexpected. That's what I say. That's what I say. Uh, stations, I've left the lock of this uh, Shlamin Yari. It's still just uh, west of uh, Chilapan on Pangolin Track. Open lock. I know there is two stations that's showing interest. I'm going to head uh, towards uh, Misikai. If, if anybody's there, please, uh, yeah, well, I'll take a stand by then. And nobody. All right. That is our cue. Let's go. Here at Wild Earth, we want you to learn as much about the wild as possible. Sadly, we can't answer all the questions on Safari Live, so we've come up with a new way to solve the problem. I love answering your questions, and now I have the chance to answer even more. Sign up to be a Wild Earth Explorer, and you can join me on July the 6th after the Sunset Safari here at the beautiful Amakala Game Reserve. Have your questions ready. Wild Earth Explorers, it's in your nature. Here at Wild Earth, we promised great monthly prizes for our explorers, and this month is no exception. If you join our club before the 10th of July, then you stand a chance to win a fabulous Safari Guide online course brought to you by Bushwise Field Guides. They specialize in accredited Safari Guide training with courses tailored for the African Safari Lodge industry. Sign up to be a Wild Earth Explorer today and don't miss out on this life-changing opportunity. I'll just take a look. I've got a very interesting uh, story uh, that I want to quickly uh, talk about. We're talking about buffaloes and buffalo dung. There's a lot of dung here, but it's a very quick story. Um, I was in Kruger Park one day. I was just doing a little kind of trip by myself uh, through the Kruger Park. And of course, I had my window down on my on the driver's side. I had the window down. I had my arm out there like looking for animals. A lot of buffalo dung was like on the road. So I'm swerving around the buffalo dung. But I had this vehicle coming from a camp called Satara coming towards me, but he was going at quite a speed. And um, as he kind of got to my vehicle, his vehicle went straight into one of the, the right hand tire of his, hit the buffalo dung at the right time. And while I was having my window open and like, you know, just loving, loving life at that point of time, I'd hit that buffalo dung and that buffalo dung, of course, while I was driving, came smacking into my face, into the car. It was so well timed by that guy. I was I was bleak with life because I had buffalo dung all over my face, I went all over my arm, all over the dashboard, and uh, yeah, my trip to Satara uh, was a very grumpy trip to that side, and I went straight to the bathroom and, of course, I washed myself off and uh, continued with my day. I had a fantastic day, always. Kruger Park, you never had a bad, a bad day, so yeah. Not a good one. <laughs> Moral of the story, never leave your window open in the Kruger Park. <laughs> when driving past Buffalo Dung. <laughs> Thanks, Jared. Yeah, it's definitely a different uh, type of spy experience, but it's a spy experience that I do not want to experience again. No. Not pretty, but uh, not a nice aroma. <laughs> uh, yeah. But I mean, I'm going to the Kruger Park, you can't help not putting the window down because you want to hear things, you want to smell, you know, smell nature. So, of course, you have to have your window down. But I think moral of the story is if there is buffalo dung in front of you and there is a guy approaching, maybe then kind of uh, preempt that whole idea thing and uh, kind of uh, wind up the window. Maybe that, will, maybe that would help. Plan ahead of time. 
right, I'm going on uh, onto Elephant Carcass. I might, I oh, know it's a little bit, uh, uh, signal sometimes is a bit shady on Elephant Carcass, but let's take a look. We're going to continue towards the uh, hyena den. Let's head over to Ralph to see what's happening on the dam cam. Well, I've just gone back to have a look at the hippos now. There is a vehicle, a safari vehicle going through in the background. I think they might have also stopped to have a quick look. And there is a zoomy that whispered in my ear that said that they think that there are maybe two leopards hiding behind the dam wall. Now, I don't think that there's any evidence of such, but it's just a feeling. So I'm hoping that they are correct. And we have some leopards coming down for a drink later. That would be wonderful. That would be awesome. For now, we'll have to watch some lazy hippos. Not to say that they aren't awesome to watch as well. But spots would be nice. Rosettes. Tough life being a hippo. It's time to put your feet up after a long week. Wild Earth invites you to unwind with a weekend at the waterhole, our life source of the bush, home to so much joy and danger. Join us on the 9th and 10th of July to get your wildlife refill broadcasted to you live all weekend at the waterhole. Wild Earth's Weekend at the Waterhole is going to be epic and we want to make sure that you are kitted out for the occasion. We've launched some wonderful merchandise just for you. Are you a dam cam lover? Find these and more on our website. So get your snacks ready, put your feet up and join us for a weekend at the waterhole. Lilac breasted roller, beautiful bird, terrible call. They, um, they sound like they're trying to start uh, an engine that's out of fuel, something like that. Ring, 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 ring. Or one of those, you know, when you go to a fair, they used to have those those old. The, you, it, it's it's got a stick and then it's it's like a winding toy that you swing around and it goes ring, 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 ring. Yeah, something like that. Starlings have got all sorts of little chattering calls. You can hear them in the background now. Favorite and least favorite smell in the bush. Well, I have to say that one of my, fa well, there's a couple of favorites. I have to say, if I go on Juma, it must be popcorn. Popcorn smell, we know we're going to see some spots. So popcorn smell being leopard, and then we know we're near to a, a leopard that's just sprayed, and we're going to find one very, very soon. So I have to say that's one of my favorite smells. And then the worst smell is a civet pasting. If you've ever smelt a hyena pasting, well, that's bad. And they say that some people can't smell it, but and, I, and I've been around people that say they can't smell it, but um, it is so pungent that I, I can smell it from 20 meters away. 
walking in the bush, I pick it up immediately. And that's a hyena pasting. Now, it times that by five, and you have a civet pasting. It is, it's terrible. It's, yo, yeah, no. And it's difficult to explain. And you know that the, the that smell is so pungent that previously, and I'm sure that there probably is still things like that, but um, they used to use it in the manufacture of um, perfumes. So it's it's the, the part that makes it linger longer. Um, and they actually used to milk um, the anal gland of civets and use that in Chanel number no. 5 and all that kind of uh, perfumes. So just think, maybe you need to check the label next time you buy your expensive champagne. Uh, right, uh, not champagne, your perfume. Um, right, speaking of hyenas and pastings, uh, Cedric is at the den. Yes, no, that must be, I think, a civet uh, pasting. M must be a vile, vile smell if uh, Ralph thinks it's definitely the worst. Oh, no, oh, I can imagine. Oh, I can just imagine. Fair enough, I haven't really experienced uh, really civet pasting as often, so I'm not too sure. Mine is definitely lion scat. I think lion scat lingers with me forever when I, if I get that smell. Yeah, yeah, I will never forget that smell. But anyway, as you can see, we all got, we've got the Juma, uh, the Juma clan, absolutely all the little ones having fun on once again in the belly, just resting at the entrance of the den with her one little cub. And then we've got, uh, it seems like we've got a Loki uh, that's busy and, you know, nibbling on, uh, on that little stump. That's one of Intima's uh, youngsters. And uh, yeah, we've got the rest all coming now from behind. Uh, they've definitely got the, the entire uh, Juma crew that's uh, all over the show yeah, once again. And then I've got a good Swazi on the one side again, but she's passed out. She's on the other side of the vehicle. Pretty much exa almost the same spot where she was yesterday afternoon. But yeah, uh, Tima's Cubs are becoming really quite uh, the explorers these days. I mean, not in Timas and the Belles Cubs. They're really moving quite far away from the entrance. When I'm talking far, I'm talking about like, you know, three, four meters away for the time being. That's far. He just wants to see what uh, that youngster is doing. Yeah, definitely a busy den site this. Uh, you're looking at nine cubs, so of course hearts. First of all, it's the ribbons, two cubs, the oldest ones, and then it's hearts. And after hearts, you've got Intima's got two, and Corky's got one, Swazi's got one, and Ndebele's got two. Oh, <laughs> did you see that? Sorry. to South Africa after having followed so many beautiful characters. This Ticket to Dream has given me a great opportunity to meet the Wild Earth team, which I thank. They're all amazing. Well, I love all of the characters, but I do have a particular passion for leopards. It's, it's a dream, and as I said before, I just keep on pinching myself, am I really here? I'm trying to figure out if that's Kira or Loki from one of them Timo's ones. Clear, yes, definitely. Those, uh, the youngsters off in the belly, they've got really full bellies. I think a lot of milk inside there. I think they've been suckling for a good few hours and they are nice and full. You can see they are very happy, 
happy chappies at the moment. A little bit of a bounce and a spring in their, in their step. I know that they're getting fed very well. As you know, that the Juma clan is very successful with uh, bringing food back and catching things and scavenging on stuff. A very, very successful, a very successful clan. Got a bit of a game up there, but it's difficult to see. Right on top of King of the Castle. Looks like they want to figure out who's, who's going to be sitting on the highest point of this Termot Mount. And it seems like we've got uh, difficult to say from here. It looks like the, the, other, the other youngster of Fentima and Koa, Corky's youngster, and looks like Masangita Swazi's young one that's playing on top of the mound there. Nusha, what does a lion's den look like? Um, a lion's den can, it's not really, I've seen lions using uh, rocky outcrops, so the rocky areas, so like a nice little area where those cubs can be nestled in one of like a, a like an open area of the rocky uh, outcrop, um, as well as maybe in a drainage lines under thick vegetation in the middle of like your uh, spike thorns, um, even your, there's also ones, uh, the, like white berry bushes, they're very thick. And sometimes you'll find those females will go right in the center of those bushes and actually uh, have their cubs in those those areas. I remember the sticks female used to, they on Juma Old Driveway, there was a little drainage line just to the west of that and uh, she had her cubs in that drainage line, not once, a few times, and was nestled perfectly under one of the, one of the spike thorns in that drainage line. So uh, there's no set area for like saying, well, a den site will, will look like this. I mean, even your hyenas, um, they'll use the culverts of uh, that's you know the pipes that run under the roads in the Kruger Park. They even use those culverts quite often as their den sites. But uh, we don't have any culverts here, so of course we've got pretty much the natural uh, termite mound which they have utilised. Yeah, a few of them that have been utilising quite a uh, quite a bit around here in Juma Private Game Reserve. But sometimes as well, you'll find that um, you'll find that even the lions they will, you know, move from den site to den site. Especially if it's if the female feels that it's been uh, um, compromised that den site and it's not good for the cubs, that's when she'll kind of carry them in their mouth and maybe move them to a, a different area and maybe a different bush or maybe into a rocky area and uh, kind of maybe feeling a little bit that the cubs will be safer being moved like that. So maybe that's why this is, you'll find that these hyenas as well, moving from den site to den site. So they've got several den sites here on Juma Private Game Reserve. They've been pretty much ribbon and ribbons and hearts started off at this den site. Then they moved further to Taxons Road. There's another den site where Tima had her two cubs. Corky had her cubs there. And then they moved not too far from that other one, to also on Taxons Road, to a very old den site that they used to have. And of course, that's where Swazi and Ndebele had their cubs. So, and all of a sudden, you have so many cubs and all that, and now they move back to this one again. So they do move all the time. I think it's also just maybe uh, the collection of parasites that's uh, you know that's collecting at those den sites, and they feel that it needs to be needs to be you know needs need to change it up a bit. I think I need to move a little bit forward, yeah. I think you're, you're missing all of this. The baby hyena, yes, definitely. It's nice to see in the belly's little cubs, uh, the, yeah, they, there again, coming to play with the others now. They're starting to become part of the, you know, the, the, the cub clan. And uh, it's nice to see that. Uh, and of course, starting to um, have that interaction with, uh, with the youngsters. with other cubs. A lot of fun and games. 
If you would like to be a part of the team that shares the wildebeest migration in Kenya live on Wild Earth, then we have some great news for you. There are a few places left to join our expeditions in August and September this year. You'll be staying in an exclusive tented camp with ensuite bedrooms nestled in the riverine woodlands of the Talek River. Head over to our website to book your bucket list experience today. Wild Earth Expeditions. Travel with purpose. Here at Wild Earth, we want you to learn as much about the wild as possible. Sadly, we can't answer all the questions on Safari Live, so we've come up with a new way to solve the problem. I love answering your questions, and now I have the chance to answer even more. Sign up to be a Wild Earth Explorer, and you can join me on July the 6th after the Sunset Safari here at the beautiful Amakala Game Reserve. Have your questions ready. Wild Earth Explorers, it's in your nature. Yeah, so, so the cub that's sitting there, standing next to uh, Ndebele is Koa. That is Corky's cub. It's moving away there now. That's Koa, K-O-A, uh, Koa. And Koa means uh, brave in Hawaiian, or bold, or fearless. So, yeah, and of course, playing with uh, Ndebele's two little rascals there. Play time for those little ones. Oh, and the bell is grab grabbing, <laughs> grabbing the other one. Watch. <laughs> and the bell has got the one cup. Oh no, don't drag it around like that. <laughs> oh, she loves dragging her cubs around by the head. Uh, Jackal, uh, yes, so Aina's got very white teeth that uh, I can imagine all the, <laughs> can imagine all the calcium that they eat, all the bones that they eat, all the calcium, nice in, in a, in enamel for their teeth, calcium teeth. Hmm. Maybe I think we should eat some, I should eat some more bones in my life then. Maybe get some white, white teeth, like whiter teeth. But yes, definitely they've got lovely teeth and it's, it seems just very strong. I think they've got very robust teeth. And uh, I think they can imagine biting through those, that hard bone. Need to, the teeth needs to be really, really strong. Hello, girl. Oh, she hears something. She picked up on something there. Or maybe she's just scanning to make sure that the cubs are still very safe. Hyena den smell like your well, it's not it's not, it's not bad. I don't have a really issue. I mean it's uh, yes, it is a urine. Um, sometimes it depends on what they've brought back recently. Sometimes they bring back a carcass that's sitting here for a bit with a you know all you know chewing on and that carcass could uh, make the hyena den, you know uh, stink a little bit more. But uh, yeah, that's it, like urine and <laughs> oh, wait, wait. A hint of a white berry in it, urine, and definitely feces. Well, not feces, scat. But mainly urine. I think urine is the worst part. It also depends on the, the, the area that you are in. So sometimes they've got a nice dense site that's around a, a potato bush, and hopefully that sometimes that potato bush will actually kind of uh, soften the smell of the hyena's den, of the hyena den. I always used to do, when I used to go to carcasses, like if I knew there was a carcass that's really like in, like a heavy smell, a smelling carcass, I used to always, before I got there, I used to get my, I'll give my guests uh, things called um, an anise, wild anise, so it's aniseed, like it smells like licorice, and used to pluck all the anise and uh, put it in your hand and give it to my guests as well, and then like kind of, when you get to the carcass, I used to tell them, well, then I crush it and put it in your mouth like a mask and put it to your nose. So at least you can smell licorice instead of uh, a carcass. So yeah, and this. Oh. When did those two get such a fright there now? Well, 
we're going to be sitting here. Just going to try and take a look who else is going to be joining the party here. Let's head back to Ralph and see what's happening on the Juma Cam. Thanks, Cedric. I wish it was me out there next to the hyena den. I do so love being around the hyenas. But, well, I'm here watching this heron, I think, trying to do a bit of hunting. So, I was thinking of following him a little bit and see if we can actually see him catch something. As you hear in the background there, that's the southern black tit. Come on, Mr. Heron. Absolutely slowly there. I think he's spotted something. Let's get his reflection as well. Hi, I am David. I come to you live from the Mana Triangle all the way from Kenya. This is not a postcard. This is real. Sunrise in the beautiful Maasai Mara. Here on Wild Earth, we love it when you interact with our guides while they are live. In order to do this, you must head over to wildearth.tv forward slash questions and submit your questions, comments and suggestions. Simple as that. And to make it even simpler, from time to time you will see a QR code on your screen. Open your camera phone and scan this code and it will take you straight to where you need to be. We look forward to answering your questions on this channel. Purple Heron makes that quick circle, making the shade, and then he zaps whatever he's confused or brought in under the shade. Lovely to watch. Uh, Nina, the the chicks when they they aren't born, obviously they hatch, so they will hatch out of the eggs. They are rather large in comparison to a lot of the little birds around here, but they are still very small because they obviously need to be laid in the egg. So I would say they're quite similar to the size of a goose. If you've ever seen a goose or a duck chick, it's quite similar to that size. Now, is that, what is that just behind the heron? Is that a terrapin? It looks like a moving rock. I would imagine it's a terrapin. I think it is. A very slow moving terrapin with a very slow moving heron. Well, when you go fishing, you need patience. And when you do it for a living, you need extra patience. And when you watch herons, you also need lots of patience. Oh, I think he's decided, no, that's a bad spot. He's going to move to another spot, pick up a bit of speed. Come on, Mr. Heron, show us your fishing skills. Well, it all depends on how many fish there are around and how easy it is to catch them. Now, a bird like this also depends on how big the fish are. 
but I've seen herons catch in excess of 20 fish in one day. And that was obviously quite a lot. And they were all quite small fish as well. And egrets, the great egrets, also just a little, well, a similar size to this heron. And they're also quite good fishermen. Come on, show us your fishing skills. They can also sometimes catch frogs. It's also got to have very good eyesight to see the critters in this muddy water. It's sometimes not always that easy, but if he struggles to see them, they will struggle to see him. That's what we always remember when we're fishing as well. Here at Wild Earth, we promised great monthly prizes for our explorers, and this month is no exception. If you join our club before the 10th of July, then you stand a chance to win a fabulous Safari Guide online course brought to you by Bushwise Field Guides. They specialize in accredited Safari Guide training with courses tailored for the African Safari Lodge industry. Sign up to be a Wild Earth Explorer today and don't miss out on this life-changing opportunity. It's time to put your feet up after a long week. Wild Earth invites you to unwind with a weekend at the waterhole, our life source of the bush, home to so much joy and danger. Join us on the 9th and 10th of July to get your wildlife refill broadcasted to you live all weekend at the waterhole. There's another terrapin there moving through the shallows. Sometimes you look at a water hole and you see, think there's not much going on, but look a little bit closer. Here we've got the ability to zoom in. Well, when you go to a water hole, you should never be without your binoculars so that you can also zoom in and see all sorts happening that you never thought was there. Righty, so I hope that this heron is going to catch a fish and I hope that he doesn't catch it while you aren't with me. But I'm going to send you back to my tag teammate, Cedric. Yes, uh, as you can see, uh, they are enjoying uh, the elephant dung, and that is uh, Loki, uh, one of uh, and Tima's youngsters, that's uh, having a bit of fun with a fresh uh, piece of dung. Oh, lovely Loki. Definitely you want to smell like elephant dung. Oh, uh, Swazi, a little bit of interaction, yeah, sorry. Swazi and Tima, and then it's on the side. Sorry, I just want to quickly turn around, yeah, because I just want to show, I think, in Tima Swazi and, uh, and the Bele's little cubs have been pampered, yeah, by, Swa uh, by Swazi as well. So, interesting. And, of course, in the Bele around the den site. So, oh, this little one's coming all the way down. A lot of interaction. As you know, in the Bele and Swazi, the two females that's at the den site at this present moment, uh, they are sisters. And uh, both of them are just over, know, about over four years old. And, uh, uh, of course, Swazi's got one, and in the Bele's got two. And this is one of the Nabele's, a little black one. And they're just over a month old. Swazi's decided, Swazi's, Swazi has decided to take the role at the entrance of the den now. So she took, took 
spell on the belly spot. So I wonder where the rest of the clan members are. There is a lot of tracks again heading towards Trias Dam. But then, as you know, hyenas can venture great distances around these areas to looking for food, looking for opportunities to scavenge. This is all just resting here. Sorry, Jan. Thanks, Jan. I think I'm messing you on around here because we actually had that. So it would have been oh, here comes another female in. Oh, we've got Corky that's just joined us. Hey, Corky. A scenic. I'm sure they will use old predator dens if they have the opportunity, if that hole in the entrance is big enough. Sorry, it's just Corky has just arrived at the den. You can see these cubs are like, who are you? And Corky has just arrived at the den site. Hmm. Sorry, I'm just listening to this quickly. A lot of interaction, yeah. Sure. It's amazing how quickly uh, the mood changed. The mood has changed here at uh, uh, the den site as soon as Corky arrived. Uh, a lot of, uh, not nervousness, but it can, just seems like a lot of attention was drawn onto her as she arrived at the den site. Even the bellies, uh, cubs are <laughs> investigating. This is Hart that's coming up here, the, lot, the big one. So that is Hart's cub in Bilu. Sorry, oh, that's in Bilu, that's Hart's cub. So, of course, the largest of all the cubs. Not the oldest, but the largest. All right, here comes Corky now. She's coming to the entrance of the den. Let's see what happens here. Wild Earth's weekend at the waterhole is going to be epic and we want to make sure that you are kitted out for the occasion. We've launched some wonderful merchandise just for you. Are you a dam cam lover? Find these and more on our website. So get your snacks ready, put your feet up and join us for a weekend at the waterhole. If you would like to be a part of the team that shares the wildebeest migration in Kenya live on Wild Earth, then we have some great news for you. There are a few places left to join our expeditions in August and September this year. You'll be staying in an exclusive tented camp with ensuite bedrooms nestled in the riverine woodlands of the Talek River. Head over to our website to book your bucket list experience today. Wild Earth Expeditions. Travel with purpose. As you can see, definitely they give uh, Corky a lot of respect. Definitely one of the highest ranked females of the Juma clan uh, when she arrived here. And you can see the little one with her. That's Swazi's little one. That's uh, Masangita. That's with uh, Corky there. And then, of course, you've got uh, Swazi just behind Corky. But definitely, as I said, Corky is definitely my one of my favourite lions. Yeah, she's she was attacked by Dark Mane, one of the male lions, and uh, she came through very well. And look where she is now today. She's doing so so fine. Uh, here comes in the belly. Anyway, well, we're going to continue just enjoying and watching uh, the Juma clan doing their thing. Let's head head over to Lauren in the Eastern Cape. We had been hiding out from the rain. It rained. And we had the most wonderful sighting of a bok makiri, a bird that we're desperate to put on camera for you. <laughs> we'll get there. But we finally have got the ngonyamas, and I accidentally said the wrong word on the radio. Ah, oh, so beautiful. 
As far as I can see, there are only two females here. But it's nice to see them out in the open. We had them the other night, but we were fighting a battle with Signal. And because the weather is pretty dismal, cloudy, rainy, drab, cold, they might actually get active sooner rather than later. So these are the lions of Amakala. And it's strange for me, it's strange meeting animals that I'm used to being so familiar with, knowing their names and their history and their lineages and their personalities and starting from scratch again. So we just need to hang around and get to know these two females. There may be more tucked away behind the thicket. I'm just not sure. We don't off-road here. It's a slightly different policy than from the Sabi Sands. But the fact that they're out on the open is just such a winner for us. Okay, we are going to sit right here and not move at all. But I believe Chris has a herd of elephants walking right towards him. Okay, we've caught up with that big herd of elephants. Again, very widespread. Here's that big guy with the big tusks. Look at him. Look at him. I was just waiting here. If he's going to continue on the road and not veer off, I'm going to have to get a bit of an escape route because he's moving fast towards us and he is very deep in must. So that guy is like, he's on the rides at the moment. If he gets to that dung, dung pile and he's not turned off, I'm going to turn around. I don't have maneuver space here. Must bulls always have your escape route. But what a magnificent creature, isn't it? We're probably only going to have a short visual because if he doesn't veer off now, as soon as he reaches that dung, I'm turning around. This is a big elephant, this goodness. Yeah, I hold his head very high. Very typical must bull. Okay. Just as a precaution, I'm going to turn around. Brief sighting. Here at Wild Earth, we want you to learn as much about the wild as possible. Sadly, we can't answer all the questions on Safari Live, so we've come up with a new way to solve the problem. I love answering your questions, and now I have the chance to answer even more. Sign up to be a Wild Earth Explorer, and you can join me on July the 6th after the Sunset Safari here at the beautiful Amakala Game Reserve. Have your questions ready. Wild Earth Explorers, it's in your nature. The Masai Mara in Kenya, a remote landscape where wilderness reigns. Its inspirational beauty captivates the hearts of many around the world. This year, from August, Wild Earth is leading a number of unique expeditions to follow Africa's greatest wildebeest migration here in the Masai Mara. And now, the remaining places have been discounted by 20%. Head over to our website to find out. to keep an escape route this way. Let's see what he does. He's coming now. Okay, let's wait for him. See, now we can allow him close. He's probably gonna continue on this road if he doesn't have veer off already. I can't see him. Is he coming? All right. I'm hoping that it'll continue on the road that we were on. We turned off. I've got an escape route that way. We'll see when he's here. We'll see if he's in, in a mood to cause trouble or not. Oh, 
what an amazing animal. That's a big guy. That's a big guy. It's my favorite sighting. Hello, boy. See, he's deep in Mastay. Look at that tusk. That is amazing. <laughs> Bronwyn says her heart is beating. Yeah, no. No, look, uh, like I said, you need. In this case, I'll let him come close. I've got enough of an escape route. Um, but when you're on a road and they're coming straight to you, especially these mast bulls, uh, if it's a herd and they relax like we did yesterday, that was fine. But this guy is deep in mast. You can see how he's got these temporal discharge on the temporal lobe right behind his eye. You can see it's like oozing. And although we cannot see his penal sheath now, it is dripping. This guy's in deep must. All right, I think this guy is better left alone. He's got other things on his mind. So let's go to, to Lauren, who's still with her lions down at Amakala. Well, seems like we're staying with us a little longer, and I don't mind. It's not every day you see such an impressive elephant. Now, even if I don't see Ezel Winnie on this shift, this would have made up for it. Ezel Winnie's task is even bigger than that. But this is an exceptional elephant. Just gonna see if we can get one last view of those tusks before we move out. We are also on a borderline area in terms of our signal. So therefore we're not gonna stay too long here. But isn't that special? Oh, we've taken our last look at it. So maybe let's head over to Liam in the meantime to see what he's doing down south on Chetwa Chetwa challenges and uh, return back to camp. We are all the way back down on uh, Chitwa Chitwa trying to uh, get a bit of a view here of some bird life. Um, our very reliable ever-present hippos and uh, yeah, just soaking up a really prime afternoon scene. This is such a spot. I will miss it. We've also got a wonderful view of uh, the local fish eagle, or one of the local fish eagles, sat up in the in a dead tree on the opposite side of the dam, broadside into the sun with his white naped neck and head, looking awfully regal today. He's a day late for all of our uh, American viewers celebrating the 4th of July. <laughs> he is uh, our answer after all to the American bald eagle. A very handsome looking bird. As we came up here the first time about an hour ago, we actually watched him swoop at the water's surface 
in an attempt to catch a fish, I think. But he missed. Maybe we'll be lucky enough to see him go again. I think we may also have a crocodile in the water there, but um, I don't know. It may just be something floating. Be worth a look. No, that is just vegetation. We want to make it even easier for you to interact with our guides whilst watching Wild Earth. When you see a QR code like this pop up on your screen, then open your phone camera, point it at the code, and you will be taken directly to our question page. Simple as that. Then you can let us know what you want to see, ask questions, and much more. Well, I've had it before where I've been walking and the water bucks jumped out of the grass. It's quite a frightening experience. Wild Earth, it's in your nature. These jacanas or lily trotters are running around all over the surface here, picking up little mollusks. Alrighty, let's check in now with the team in the Eastern Cape, who I believe have some lions. We are still watching our gonies, as they delightfully call them on the radio here, and I just love it. I find it really endearing. And you will be able to hear the rain. We are sitting in the rain, but because we're stationary, it's fine. And we're waiting for that moment. Lioness gets up and just shakes. All the water comes off her and it will just be glorious. I don't know how long we'll have to wait for that though. But it's interesting dynamics here at Amakala. As you know, it's split into three. The Northern Territory, we have not been, and I don't know if we'll ever get to it. The Main Territory, which is where we are right now with the lions, and the Carnarvon, Carnarvondale side, which is where the cheetahs are. I believe cheetahs, well, the population that they did have of cheetahs was were decimated by lions, I'm afraid. So they have sort of separated the two species. And with cheetahs, it's a sad story. You know, they reached a population bottleneck and had lots of, still do have lots of difficulties with genetics. So Amakala are very proud of their cheetah population. We don't want inbreeding to occur. Inbreeding is devastating to the species. It threatens the entire genetic um, integrity of the species and quite detrimental to the evolution of the species in the future. But sadly, cheetah and lion are no longer kept in the same reserve. Oh, you're a bonny lass. <laughs> As my mother would say. I do feel for the animals in the rain. Stuck in bed. That's exactly where I'd rather be right now. <laughs> no, it's good to hear from you, and you're just loving the lush landscape. I know. It's a completely different climate here, and Giles, one of the owners, was telling me that it's not always this lush in winter. If frost hits, and if the temperatures really drop, then it, the vegetation will start to die off. But obviously, it's not that cold right now. Well, it's chilly, but... You know, I'm probably over-exaggerating. Or exaggerating. Over-exaggerating isn't actually a word, is it? And... There's rain, so there is a lot of liquid and water around. 
So I'm hoping our lions are going to get up soon, but for now we're going to send you guys over to Chris with this elephants. Okay, we're still with that herd. It is that big herd. There's some big cows here. One's coming to cross right past us here. A little big girl. We just here in peace. It's checking us out, but that's not a problem. See, in this case, I'm, look at this one. He's got a pipe. <laughs> no, man, we're not going to cause trouble. You can eat there. I know you want that grass. She's checking us out. It's a big old cow. She's giving us a bit of a head shake. And it's just to tell us, all right, I'm watching you. I'm not worried about that. A mass bull at 150 meters approaching us quite fast. That is something that worries me. This is fine. This is all good. It's amazing. I mean, that looked so much more aggressive than a bull approaching us. But that's your experience. And all of that coming. This is an enormous group of elephants. Look, there's even more in the back there. There's more coming down the road. Jeez. And we've, with that bull, there was already probably at least 30 of them that's passed already. This is spectacular stuff. Calves, cows. There's one cow, but we will not be able to see, but she's two meters from us, inside a tree bush here. We'll just need to check her when she comes out. It's a big girl with that long, straight tusks. She's been known to be rather feisty. But she's happily eating on a, on a resin bush there. Now back up, uh, Kate will just keep an eye on that one. But we're good. This is good stuff. She's gonna cross behind us. I'm not sure if there's a way that you can get that. Uh, oh, there we go. No, there she is. Oh, it's an enormous cow. amount of ox peckers on this poor, poor hippopotamus. Almost more ox pecker than skin at the moment. But they do seem to be retreating now it's heading into the water. Maybe that's what you should have done first there. Wow, they really are. That was an effective method there, hippopotamus. Well done. And oh, they go. <laughs> Like being in a herd of buffalo, but just better. Special stuff. There's even more. All right, we've got a gap to actually move forward now. Not surrounded anymore. So while we check out those there, we're going to try and see what they're up to. Let's go to Lauren and her lions. My lions are actually on the move. We didn't quite get that gorgeous um, head shake. They now have gone behind the thicket. Do you have any visual, Dal? Through the thicket. Through the thicket. You have a visual through the thicket. That is excellent. We're just going to let this other vehicle pass, I think, and then we're going to loop around and try and catch up with them. Do you want us to go around? Okay. Oh, wait, wait. We're on the move. There is a herd of wildebeest, black wildebeest, of course, 
in the direction that they are looking. We passed them on the way here. And I imagine that will be very much interesting them. But they are not cheetahs, as you already know. And this is a very open area. It's, it's the grasslands. I don't know how a lion would fare in a completely open area. They need to stalk. They need to ambush. But I imagine they'll try. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna slowly, slowly trundle that way. You'll be able to hear my heater when I turn the car on. Delightful. Okay, Dov, you ready? Ariel, I agree, actually. Are you happy here, Davi, or do you want to get closer? Yeah, sure. Ariel, I agree. Thank you. You inspired me, and you said it's interesting to see them from this low angle, and it is. Cameramen love low angle stuff. My goodness. Now, the one with the collar is the older lioness out of the two. I don't actually know their ages. I don't know if anybody does. But out of the two of them, the one with the collar is the older one. She seems to take lead quite a lot. And the sort of smaller one without the collar is a younger one. And she does a lot of the following. And talking of following, that's what we're going to do. It's so nice to spend time with the lions. We've not seen the male yet. We've still to see him. He's young, but he's apparently already quite magnificent. Okay, hopefully we're going to get some views. But as I sort of bumble up there, don't forget everyone, tomorrow night, after sunset, you all have the chance to apparently ask me anything. And I will answer. Hello, ladies. I will do my very best to answer. And that is tomorrow after Sunset Safari. We will be, it will be taking place inside the Woodbury Tented Camp dining room, right next to the fire. So please do join me. Actually, it's not that open up ahead, is it? So they're heading directly for the thicket rather than the open area. Theodore, my goodness, it's been so exciting from start to finish, exploring, getting it wrong. We got really lost last night. I'll blame Davi, he'll blame me. <laughs> uh, just seeing a different landscape, different vegetation, it's a completely different biome here. It's actually, there are multiple biomes here. And I think the cheetah have been spectacular because I really miss spending time with Cheetah. I used to spend a lot of time with Busara, Queen Bee, as some of you remember in the Masai Mara. The secretary birds were just out of this world. They were just amazing. The eelland, it's lovely to see eelland again and spend time with them. Black wildebeest, that looked just like me from behind with the blonde dry hair. Oh, everything. The sunbirds coming down to the aloes, which we have still to get on camera, and we absolutely will when it's a bit sunnier. But we actually have a huge list of things, and I don't want to spoil it. Surprises for you that we still have to work on getting, and we will. You know me. We will. So I'll keep all that secret, Theodore, but there are still so many species that I don't believe many of you will have seen, at least on Wild Earth, that we're going to try our hardest to get for you. Okay, look at these two ladies walking side by side. We're going to try and keep up with them if we can. But for now, we're going to send her across to Ralph to see what action is happening on the dam cam. Well, yes, that's wonderful that Lauren has found the lions on Amakala, the place of aloes, even though there's no aloes left because the elephants have eaten all of them. Well, back here at the Juma Dam, 
my suspicions were correct earlier with the oxpeckers calling. That would mean there'd be some antelope around, and there they are, these lovely impala, with the go-away bird calling in the background. They are quite far away along the tree line. We protect and reconnect nature across Southern Africa. We bring countries together to care for wild spaces that stretch beyond borders. We protect and restore biodiversity. We prioritize the people living in these landscapes, enabling them to thrive in harmony with nature. We are restoring tomorrow. Yes, so the black-faced impala, one of the most special animals to see. Almost exactly the same, but just a few more black markings on the face. And for me, they do seem to be slightly larger. highly photogenic as are these impala so they really are pretty well i'm hoping that these give away a predator just now lawrence with lions and it seems that liam is as well She's huge, dude. You, you, a beast. So, uh, what a pleasure! Just as the sun is starting to sink in the sky, BK and myself are enjoying the most amazing sighting of the Nkuhuma lions here on the Chitra property. We have timed it perfectly. They have been sleeping in this exact spot for the entire day. Just as we've arrived, they've all got up and got mobile. 14 lions, if I'm not mistaken. That is awesome. Still quite a few behind us, at least four. Yeah, here they all come. Stretching and uh, making their way. That is brilliant. BK, they're all climbing on a big log up there. Should we try and reposition? Just try and get a different view there. I see somebody standing up on a log. That might be quite an interesting view. These cubs look like they are full of beans. We'll do everything we can to get around. Oh. If you would like to be a part of the team that shares the wildebeest migration in Kenya live on Wild Earth, then we have some great news for you. There are a few places left to join our expeditions in August and September this year. You'll be staying in an exclusive tented camp with ensuite bedrooms nestled in the riverine woodlands of the Talek River. Head over to our website to book your bucket list experience today. Wild Earth Expeditions. Travel with purpose. Here at Wild Earth, we want you to learn as much about the wild as possible. 
Sadly, we can't answer all the questions on Safari Live, so we've come up with a new way to solve the problem. I love answering your questions, and now I have the chance to answer even more. Sign up to be a Wild Earth Explorer, and you can join me on July the 6th after the Sunset Safari here at the beautiful Amakala Game Reserve. Have your questions ready. Wild Earth Explorers, it's in your nature. <laughs> a whole tree full of lions. Can you believe it? That is such a supreme scene. Wow. So are not very skilled tree climbers. <laughs> a little clumsy, to be perfectly honest with you. My goodness. So I think this is all just part of these guys getting nice and active now. Lots of yawning. What a send off indeed. Wow. They're also sort of starting to organize themselves on a termite mound in front of us, but this tree action is just too cool. <laughs> that slightly larger cub is not in the mood to wrestle up in this tree. It knows it'll fall down. But the youngster's keen to play there. Nina never gets old. That is uh, just superb. Everybody keen to get up here and stretch their legs, stretch their tendons out. All part of uh, getting nice and active for the evening. That is so cool. Somebody told these youngsters that they're leopards and they haven't figured out that that wasn't the truth. <laughs> Wow, guys, what a unique view on these uh, very, very, very impressive looking young lions. So healthy. Mullamore, indeed. <laughs> these guys are just pretenders. Thankfully, at only about half a meter off the ground, if uh, it doesn't work out, they're not going to get too badly hurt. <laughs> so cool. We are in such a prime spot. <laughs> we found a little nook only big enough for Wendy to fit in. That is surreal. Let's see if this older lioness climbs up. I think she will. <laughs> Here 
at Wild Earth, we promised great monthly prizes for our explorers, and this month is no exception. If you join our club before the 10th of July, then you stand a chance to win a fabulous Safari Guide online course brought to you by Bushwise Field Guides. They specialize in accredited Safari Guide training with courses tailored for the African Safari Lodge industry. Sign up to be a Wild Earth Explorer today and don't miss out on this life-changing opportunity. It's time to put your feet up after a long week. Wild Earth invites you to unwind with a weekend at the waterhole, our life source of the bush, home to so much joy and danger. Join us on the 9th and 10th of July to get your wildlife refill broadcasted to you live all weekend at the waterhole. My goodness. Baby hyena, this is without a doubt a lion jungle gym. How's this lioness? Just resting her arm so nicely, or not really her arm, her front leg. That is so cool. So cool. Wowza. This is some remarkably sort of jovial, playful behavior. Uh, So I have left the Juma clan, I have left the, uh, the den site that side, of course all the little ones are playing and having fun there, um, but um, I went around to where Columbus Cubs were this morning, I had Kudu Alarm calling there in that drainage line where the Cubs were, and, um, uh, Liam had uh, uh, the young female. Uh, but I couldn't see anything there. I wasn't really going to go push too far. We are losing light now, as you know. We don't really view the Cubs alone at night time. So, uh, but I'm going to move on. I'm coming towards Galigo Pan. I'm going to see what's further now, just west of our lodge, because we had the Molawati male leopard uh, this morning about 1 o'clock crossing the dam wall. But you know male leopards, they can travel great distances. And plus, you know, Molawati is uh, not the most uh, uh, relaxed when it comes to the vehicle side of things. So... Um, but I'm hoping, so never know, holding thumbs that we are lucky with him around here. But yeah, what a sighting with uh, Liam with the uh, lions in a tree. Um, that is uh, definitely a magical, a good way for uh, Liamston to end off. And uh, I think I'm very happy for him, very, very happy for him to have that sighting. Magical. Magnifique, magnifique. Okay, so I'm going to head towards Galago Pan. Let's see what's happening down where towards Galago Pan. Tavangumi, we haven't seen Tavangumi for a while, eh? I wonder what's happened to Tavangumi. I would love to see that uh, male leopard again. Really would love to. This is his area as well. Wild Earth's weekend at the waterhole is going to be epic, and we want to make sure that you are kitted out for the occasion. We've launched some wonderful merchandise just for you. Are you a damn cam lover? Find these and more on our website. 
So get your snacks ready, put your feet up, and join us for a weekend at the waterhole. No, he's really gone. Bye bye, Niala. <laughs> he's moved off. Anyway, while we're going to continue with uh, Galigo Pad there to Galigo Pad, let's head over to Chrissy Pridelands. I think he's got a beautiful sunset to show everybody. It's all happening, eh? it's all happening. And I was just taking one last little look in this little drainage below for any sign of those lions. Doesn't seem like it's meant to be today for us. We had a cracker though, when I mean, we had those elephants on foot. We had that big group of elephants. And now we've got that lovely glow after the sunset, which we will enjoy for a second or two. Join me, I'm just gonna have a quiet moment and just love it this time of the day it's like i always say this when you just relive the experiences of the day hard tracking this morning some lovely segments that we've done with tracking those lines no success in finding them but it was an experience sometimes the journey is better than the destination just being out here be and being able to have that privilege of tracking them on foot already was quite an experience on its own then we went out this afternoon and tried to see if we can't probe them out somewhere bumped into those elephants on foot that was sensational and then topped it off with that beautiful sighting of that large herd awesome stuff all right seems like our light has gone so we're gonna link you to Ralph, who's still going on the camera. So we are still sitting with the cuddling monitor lizards. We came back to them just to see what was going on and well, not much has changed. We can't fully see them. However, if you look at the bottom of that log, just where it meets the water, there's a little cave there. There is a small monitor lizard just poking his head out every now and then. You might just see his tongue sticking out every now and then. Well, he's there. And he's been coming in and out. I don't know what he's up to. But it seems like he's found himself a lovely little cave there right below where these two are cuddling. Well. Wild Earth have really inspired me to return to South Africa after having followed so many beautiful characters. This Ticket to Dream has given me a great opportunity to meet the Wild Earth team, which I thank. They're all amazing. I love all of the characters, but I do have a particular passion for leopards 
it's, it's a dream and as I said before, I just keep on pinching myself, am I really here? If you would like to be a part of the team that shares the wildebeest migration in Kenya live on Wild Earth, then we have some great news for you. There are a few places left to join our expeditions in August and September this year. You'll be staying in an exclusive tented camp with ensuite bedrooms nestled in the riverine woodlands of the Talek River. Head over to our website to book your bucket list experience today. Wild Earth Expeditions. Travel with purpose. Leopard lover, I'm not entirely sure exactly where these hippos came from. They, they might have come from Chitwa Dam. They could have come from further afield. You know, that's what happens if there's, if there's a, a number of males in one pond. Uh, eventually, you know, one or two of them might get kicked out. It depends on how big the pond is. Like this pond, I would say this is a one-man pond. And if another male had to come here, I think he would be kicked out by Dewey, who is now the dominant male of the Gowrie Pond or Dam. Um, but uh, yes, so potentially, and if anybody has any further information, you can always let me know using the link wildearth.tv forward slash questions or scanning the QR code and send it through to me. That would be news to me. I was here when there was not even any water in this pond and so this is a new character for me we used to have scuba steve up at uh, biffles hook dam he was on his own and he was quite a shy hippo and so that uh, when we arrived there he would always just have his nostrils showing um so he didn't like showing his face maybe he was just camera shy i don't know but uh we got to know him, him together with Wingston Churchbill. He used to come and visit us as uh, he was um, a yellow-billed hornbill and obviously had been visiting the tourists there that came on safari and they were having their breakfast or coffee breaks or sundowners at Bifflesuk Dam and he was obviously getting some crumbs and so knew that a stopped vehicle meant food. He, we didn't give him any food, but he uh, sat up nicely for the camera and wasn't scared at all. So we aptly named him Wingston Churchbill. Between myself and Fergus Clark, who was my wingman cam operator at the time. I can hear mongoose. Mongoose, mongoose. Let's zoom back. I can hear the little beep, 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 beep of mongoose. Where are they? Where are you, mongoose? Mongooses or mongoose? Singular, plural. What would you say? Mongoose? One mongoose, two mongoose. Not mongooses, surely. It's like I always used to laugh with the French guests because you say, in French, you say, un jacal. And uh, so, if you say one horse, it's a uh, un cheval. But uh, cheval cheval, sorry, cheval cheval. So I used to try and say the same with jackals, which was un jacal de jaco. And they used to say, no, 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 it's not the same. So anyway, if you don't speak French, you wouldn't understand. But it's quite a funny thing to work out singular and plural sometimes it's like for me one springbok two springbok it's not springboks whereas with the french they always want to say uh, oh look at the springboks uh, no it's not the springboks it's the springbok even if there's more than one yeah so anyway nice just to play with the different languages not always as simple as it seems and you hear that that's a hurricane thrush. There. So the hurricane thrush, different to the forktail dronga, he's the R2D2. There's R2D2. 
It's like uh, he's fighting with laser beams as well, but it's a different laser beam. You understand? Okay. All right. Well, I try to find these little dwarf mongoose beep beeping around here. Let's send you off to Liam. Yeah, and I wonder, like Ralph was talking about, those uh, monitor li lizards that's still copulating. Um, I wonder how long they do copulate for. I think they uh, found those monitor lizards uh, mating from the beginning of the show. And, uh, yeah, that is already two and a half hours, or three and a half hours into, into the show. So, wow. Monitor lizards, I wonder how long they do copulate for. That is... It is very intense. Anyway, I am on Zoe's. I'm going uh, south down uh, Zoe's. Um, uh, and I'm going to try and see. Maybe Mulawati did decide to turn south from from uh, our camp last night. I haven't seen anything on Vuyotila access. I wonder if he didn't come across uh, quarantine and came directly into the side. So I am going down Zoe's just to pick up on it, see if I can see any tracks of his around here. And uh, hoping that we can, for once, for once, get a dominant male on uh, our screen, which would be very nice. Well, we did have a dominant male on the screen last night, but that was on uh, dam cam, so yes, I want to see him. We'll, we'll take a look. Mm, scratch around very carefully around this area. I try to find out as well about uh, Molawati this afternoon. Um, I mean, not Molawati. Where am I going with that? Uh, Marips. So I haven't. Uh, the guy that I spoke to this afternoon hasn't got back to me again. So I will we'll definitely keep you up updated on Marips and his doings because he was on Koro this morning. Looks like quite far east. Uh, well, just east of Chitwa. So yeah, we'll see what uh, his moving, movements are like. And, uh, you know, Marepsi is getting to that age now where he has to look for a territory of his own, sooner or later, for a nice area where he can settle down. Hoping it's going to be close to here, which would be fantastic. Hopefully, you can imagine his territories, territories like kind of inside Juma somewhere. It'll be magic, but. <laughs> Most amusing animal in Carlton. I didn't get the name there. Uh, sorry, I didn't get the, the name. Oh, nice buffaloes here again. Grotius Millen. Uh, most, most amazing animal, oh, most uh, funniest animal encounter. Uh, you know, oh, ooh, these buffaloes all yeah. I think it will be definitely a, a, an elephant, a baby elephant. I think uh, to me, not once, but several times where they feel like they are uh, very large elephants, but they are about 150 kgs large, which is very small for an elephant, of course. And sometimes they think they are like four tons. And I love it when they start uh, doing those mock charges towards the vehicle. And I uh, always enjoy that. So that's many times uh, a very funny moment with animals around here. Yeah. It's definitely the baby elephants. I think that was quite hilarious. This is a different herd. This is the smaller herd. This is that smaller herd I was talking about. I thought that we saw earlier around Chilapan. But now we're far from Chilapan. That herd is going down to Twin Dams now, that big herd. But this is definitely the smaller herd. So we've got two herds on Juma at this uh, point of time. The smaller one here, and then, of course, a larger one heading down to Twin Dams. But, uh, yeah, I was trying to think what other hilarious things I have seen when it comes to comes to uh, animals. Definitely I saw leopard cubs um, many years ago with Shadow. She had two cubs many years ago and I remember they're on Arethusa driveway. Uh, we had the cubs in the tree and they were, they were about maybe five, six months old 
and uh, they were playing both up in a Tamburti thicket, a Tamburti tree, and of course one of them misstepped uh, and came tumbling out of that tree like a rock. So uh, it was it was hilarious, but it was also oh shame kind of thing. But of course the club got up and just like sped off and felt quite embarrassed at that at that time. So yeah. But definitely, I still think elephants are the funniest ones. <laughs> you know, while we are going to continue down Zoe's, if I can get past this herd of uh, buffalo, uh, let's head back to Liam as he's got his lions on Chitwa. And we're still sitting with these beautiful buffalo moving in a westerly direction. But it, is, it looks like there's further, there's more further on. Well, let me, uh, I'm just going to hang back a bit. I don't want to go in and interrupt this female that's looking at me quite intensely. She needs to eat her grass. Eat your food, girl. Eat. See, you got a little, yeah, it's only got grass in your mouth. You got food in your mouth. Eat. Here at Wild Earth, we want you to learn as much about the wild as possible. Sadly, we can't answer all the questions on Safari Live, so we've come up with a new way to solve the problem. I love answering your questions, and now I have the chance to answer even more. Sign up to be a Wild Earth Explorer, and you can join me on July the 6th after the Sunset Safari here at the beautiful Amakala Game Reserve. Have your questions ready. Wild Earth Explorers, it's in your nature. Hi, I am David. I come to you live from the Mala Triangle, all the way from Kenya. This is not a postcard. This is real sunrise in the beautiful Maasai Mara. female has still got the grass in the Please chew that grass because it... <laughs> Thank you. No, you can chew. Chew. <laughs> uh. anyway, we're going to try and move on down to Zoe's. <laughs> Let's head over to Ralph as he's got some giraffe on the damn cam. <laughs> Well, I've been following this giraffe just next to the waterhole and it was quite comical because a little bit earlier he was um, he had the perfect tree scratching post and it was just the perfect height at the perfect angle and he was having an absolute ball hitting the right spot. And this bull now seems to be on a mission. He's heading off upriver. Hmm. Well, off he went. That's him, I suppose. Don't think we're going to see much more of him. Unless he turns around. Still hear the hippos there in the background. Looking around, that's a lovely tree for vultures to rest up on, I always think. Lovely dead trees like that. Now, Bobby, you asked something, what is the strangest something? I'm just going to ask him to ask me again, because I'm not quite sure on the exact question. Something strange about animals? Ah, collective nouns, yes, the plurals for animals. The, um, the strangest one, well, I'd have to say a parliament of owls. That's not really the strangest, that's a good one. I like a crash of rhino. Um, what are the other good ones? It's like when you have a good joke, you can never remember the good joke when you want to. Uh, I can never remember the right plurals of animals, collective nouns, um, 
Crash of Rhino, yeah. Parliament of Owls. What else do we have? Um, what is it of crows? Uh, I forget the crows. The crows is a good one as well. But now I've forgotten. Oh, well. It's a journey of giraffe, of course. That's a simple, easy one. But the crows, that's a good one, but I can't remember it. Anyway, send it through on the comments. Here on Wild Earth, we love it when you interact with our guides while they are live. In order to do this, you must head over to wildearth.tv forward slash questions and submit your questions, comments and suggestions. Simple as that. And to make it even simpler, from time to time you will see a QR code on your screen. Open your camera phone and scan this code and it will take you straight to where you need to be. We look forward to answering your questions on this channel. Here at Wild Earth, we promised great monthly prizes for our explorers, and this month is no exception. If you join our club before the 10th of July, then you stand a chance to win a fabulous Safari Guide online course brought to you by Bushwise Field Guides. They specialize in accredited Safari Guide training with courses tailored for the African Safari Lodge industry. Sign up to be a Wild Earth Explorer today and don't miss out on this life-changing opportunity. Collective noun or plural for animals is a murder of crows. I like that one. The youngster's giving us a nice little show of his teeth. I think they need a brush, buddy. So there's a little bit of doing odds and bobs now that when they come out the water, there might be just a bit of spreading of their dung as well. So that can be expected. They've been in the water the whole day, so coming out now when the sun's gone down. Also very thick-skinned are hippos. More than an inch thick. And there he's having a little play around, I think, this youngster. <laughs> Muli Moo, a flamboyant of flamingos. I like it. Like it. Keep them coming, yeah. I think it's quite a boring one with hippos. I think it's just a pod, if I'm not mistaken. There we go. A little bit of just doing the the business. Oh, to be a hippo. I like hippos' tracks. They look like flowers. I always uh, and a bit like proteas, if you had to draw proteas. Benji, yep, that's not a bad one. A gaggle of geese, good one. You know, it's funny how when you go on safari, you speak to your guides, you often get to these conversations. And yeah, it's always great when, you, when folks come out with their different uh, plurals or collective nouns of animals. Because I think there's a few different ones for different animals as well. Ah, prickle of porcupines. That's a good one too. Thanks, Lola. A prickle of porcupines. Classic. A 
Gaggle of geese, murder of crows, crash of rhino. Huh. Getting through them. What about rabbits or hares? I'm sure there's something there's something good with rabbits and hares as well. I know it. I just can't remember it. Short term memory loss. Well, long term memory loss, I would say. It's time to put your feet up after a long week. Wild Earth invites you to unwind with a weekend at the waterhole, our life source of the bush, home to so much joy and danger. Join us on the 9th and 10th of July to get your wildlife refill broadcasted to you live all weekend at the waterhole. Wild Earth's Weekend at the Waterhole is going to be epic and we want to make sure that you are kitted out for the occasion. We've launched some wonderful merchandise just for you. Are you a damn cam lover? Find these and more on our website. So get your snacks ready, put your feet up and join us for a weekend at the waterhole. And that's the thing with birding. Sometimes you learn the birds from their call, even though you've never seen them. And sometimes you learn them by the sight and you don't know what they sound like. So you try to obviously, like I'm sure, I think Chris was doing it the other day with the, with the trees. Um, you, you learn trees in winter and you learn trees without leaves. So you've got to look at their shape, their structure, the bark, what, you know, everything. And we used to often go through this with the students that we had, for instance, in winter, we had to teach them the methods to, to learn all the trees without all the leaves or anything on it. And then in summer was the other way around where you had to learn the leaves. Um, and, and so the guys that learned them in winter um, had a better understanding of the tree structure itself, but the guys that learned it in summer had a better understanding of the leaf structure per se. So it was, uh, and eventually you learn both. But yeah, these hippos now heading off for their grazing and the nightly jaunt, but I'm going to head you on back to Cedric. still going on <laughs> down Zoe's and um, I'm still trying to see but I didn't see any tracks of, uh, of uh, any of the leopards, Malawati or even Chidulu on this side so I think I'm going to move a little bit further east into the Juma, maybe towards the Treehouse tree Dam and take a look <laughs> and see if I can pick up on anything that side. Alright. <laughs> Oh, look at that sky. Actually, do you think we can actually try and get that in there, Johan? I think that's going to be quite pretty. Sorry, I think it's a. I think this is absolutely stunning. Uh, sorry, can I reverse there? Can I reverse? Can I cap? Sorry, everybody. I'm just going to try and get a. There's a nice spot here. I think I didn't see it, but this is going to be definitely a, a, an area that you can actually take a look at the stunning orange sky. Winter, winter sunsets are still the best. I prefer them to summer. All right, let's put off here. Yeah, there we go. Look at that. Look at that. Just those colours, those different colours from the bottom, working its way up to like a bluish, kind of a light grey bluish colour. Beautiful. And of course the Drakensberg in the background. Definitely can sit like this and reflect on our days, our sightings and uh, our doings and definitely grab that glass of gin and tonic or 
wine or beer or whatever your what do you favor for a drink for a sunset if you would like to be a part of the team that shares the wildebeest migration in Kenya live on Wild Earth, then we have some great news for you. There are a few places left to join our expeditions in August and September this year. You'll be staying in an exclusive tented camp with ensuite bedrooms nestled in the riverine woodlands of the Talek River. Head over to our website to book your bucket list experience today. Wild Earth Expeditions. Travel with purpose. Here at Wild Earth, we want you to learn as much about the wild as possible. Sadly, we can't answer all the questions on Safari Live, so we've come up with a new way to solve the problem. I love answering your questions, and now I have the chance to answer even more. Sign up to be a Wild Earth Explorer, and you can join me on July the 6th after the Sunset Safari here at the beautiful Amakala Game Reserve. Have your questions ready. Wild Earth Explorers, it's in your nature. Anyway, let's uh, while we sit here and still admire this uh, beautiful sky that we do have, let's head back to Liam as he's got some buffalo. So, how's this for a, a pretty splendid scene? Uh, we've left those lines now. We unfortunately had to make some room for uh, some other eager safari goers. Uh, not that unfortunate. It's uh, nice to share with everybody. Nice for everybody to get the beautiful action. Becca and myself are uh, slowly back, uh, making our way back onto Juma. Um, what a nice surprise here at Twin Dams, the big herd of buffalo coming down to drink. Uh, we have transitioned into infrared, so we don't have to shine any lights on them. It's giving us the most amazing view of these bulls, cows and calves coming down in dribs and drabs uh, to have a, a last drink for the evening. Amazing to see all those ripples and the reflections from these daily drinkers, the buffalo. The old Cape Buffalo is highly, highly, highly reliant on water. They're actually a great indicator species for the health of the environment uh, because uh, when the environment begins to suffer, if uh, we're running out of grass, if our water supplies are running too low, our buffalo are often the first ones to show signs of wear and tear. Uh, the drought that we passed through in 2016 and 2017 killed thousands of them. So the fact that our buffalo are looking so big and robust, so healthy, that's a great sign that it has indeed been a very healthy wet season. And even as far as uh, July now, can you believe we're in July already? Midwinter, the buffalo are still looking strong. That's great. Cares not at all. So um, buffalo have a home range, but uh, the groups do not defend a territory at all. Uh, bulls absolutely will fight each other, uh, but that is uh, for the rights to uh, mate with females. So fights are often within groups. And fights can be brutal. Uh, ballistics experts equate the force generated by two buffalo bulls when they slam their heads together to me hitting Wendy into a brick wall at 50 kilometers per hour. Can you imagine? The Masai Mara in Kenya, a remote landscape where wilderness reigns. Its inspirational beauty captivates the hearts of many around the world. This year from August, Wild Earth is leading a number of unique expeditions to follow Africa's greatest wildebeest migration here in the Masai Mara. 
and now the remaining places have been discounted by 20%. Head over to our website to find out. We want to make it even easier for you to interact with our guides whilst watching Wild Earth. When you see a QR code like this pop up on your screen, then open your phone camera, point it at the code, and you will be taken directly to our question page. Simple as that. Then you can let us know what you want to see, ask questions, and much more. I've had it before where I've been walking and the water bucks jumped out of the grass. It's quite a frightening experience. Wild Earth, it's in your nature. As our buffalo bulls and cows fade into oblivion there, let's head over to Cedric, who I believe is on the move. Ah, it's definitely a buffalo day, a buffalo day for us. That is fantastic, of all the afternoon that is. Very nice, very nice indeed. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just get towards Tree House Dam, take a look at that side. I know Ralph was talking about uh, collective nouns for animals, and um, I think uh, there's some interesting ones there, definitely. And uh, the sounder of warthogs. I actually, I thought of one now, and the thing is, like, yeah, in the guiding industry, yeah, always when people come here, a lot of the guides always say, you know. The Impalas are the McDonald's of the bush because they've got that black M on their hindquarters. So it's always like a joke. It's like, oh, it's a McDonald's of the bush. You know, you get one around every corner and everything eats it and all that stuff. So I thought to myself, okay, if they are the McDonald's of the bush, is there a collective noun for Impalas? I went to go look and I couldn't find anything on Impalas at all. I couldn't find anything. So I said, well, if it's a McDonald's of the bush, we shall call that a herd of Impalas a franchise of impalers. <laughs> a franchise of impalers. I think that's a, that's a nice one. It'll go. It's got a nice ring to it as well. <laughs> uh, but if there is a collective noun for it, well, then I guess I cannot, uh, I cannot put that one there. But, uh, <laughs> uh, Anyway, let's, uh, it is nice and getting nice and dark now, so I'm hoping we can pick up on some nice uh, night activity uh, and get some, uh, find some owls and uh, genets and all that if we are lucky. Let's see if we can get those uh, reflecting eyes shining at us. Uh, clear. What intrigues me about na most about nature, I think what intrigues me most is just how everything really works together. There's always there's a reason for each animal, uh, each species to be around, plants, grasses, and how everything really works uh, as a whole. I think it's just really, especially if you spend a lot of time here and you start seeing that if, for instance, the termite mounds, if they, were, if a termite mound wasn't around yet, those termites, those uh, large fungus growing termites didn't make those big mounds. You know, what then? What species wouldn't be? You know what I mean? That's certain things that kind of helps each other. It's a bit like the, it's all the symbiotic relationships between the animals. So I think that's really, uh, it intrigues me a lot. Um, but yes, of course, leopards, I always, always loved leopards. I think it's always nice. I mean, I've seen leopards from uh, when they're cubs and until they've grown up to adulthood and having a territory of their own. So I've witnessed the whole process of a leopard's kind of uh, life, which is, uh, which I'm very fortunate to do and which I'm fortunate to see. So yes, that's definitely, things like that really kind of uh, gets close, well, very close to me. Um, but just the whole symbiotic uh, relationship of nature and how things help each other. It's just incredible, incredible. And especially when you see different type, kinds of weather that's coming through, like you see all these cluster leaves that's broken here. Yeah, it's actually amazing 
Not many animals will eat these cluster leaves, the silver cluster leaves, because it's very high in tannin. The leaves are very, very high in tannin. So not many animals will eat it. But you'll find, especially now when it had so much rain and the, and the ground is so soft, um, you'll find that the elephants have actually pushed a lot of these silver cluster leaves over and actually went for the roof, uh, roots. And they don't usually see that at all. You know, they usually never really go for any cluster leaf uh, trees. But because the ground is so soft, they knew that they know the ground is soft. They know it's a nice thing and an easy thing to push over and get to those roots. So it's all such a it's, a, it's amazing how things just work together. Coming up to Treehouse Dam now, let me take a look what's happening at Treehouse Dam. Also thinking about, uh, talking about leopard leopards as well. <laughs> oh, I see a happy meal of impalas. <laughs> Definitely, it won't be a happy meal for you. There won't be a happy impala, but definitely the happy lions or <laughs> happy <laughs> a happy leopard. But uh, well, you can have a happy meal of impalas. That's actually quite a good one. <laughs> uh, no. <Yeah. laughs> All right, that's it. Just oh, that's, that's sorry. That stick bounced right up. Thought it was a snake. Clearly not. Right, I'm just going to sit back a little bit. I just wanna, just, I'm just going to scan this water hole. Talking about a water hole now, as you guys know, this weekend that's coming, it is a water hole weekend. So on uh, this water hole weekend, it's going to be the 9th and the 10th of uh, July. We shall be doing some dam hopping, pan hopping, going from one water hole to the other water hole. Of course, uh, Ralph will be on dam cam at all the water holes in Mashatu and Juma Dam. And of course, uh, Lauren and Emma as well going to be yes, spending time at Waterholes. All of us will be spending time at Waterholes and in Pridelands as well. So we are looking forward to that. So this weekend is a Waterhole weekend. So, yes. And it's going to be nice. I'm hoping it is going to be in a... a I think hopefully the weather's going to be like today, yesterday and today, because about 26, 27 degrees Celsius, nice and warm. You saw those buffaloes coming down to the water hole there, Twin Dams with uh, Liam. So I think that is going to be fantastic if the weather's going to be like that on uh, Saturday and Sunday, the 9th and the 10th. And I'm definitely going to be so excited. Treehouse Dam. I don't see too much happening yet at this point in time. I think uh, let's head over a little bit further east from where we are now. Come. Oops. Um, all right. Now let's head over to Liam and see how it's going on his safari. So uh, the bumble continues for BK and myself. We've left our uh, our buffalo moving into the dark nicely now. My word, the temperature has crashed. It is proper nippy out here. Uh, but all good. We are wrapped up warm. 
eager to bumble and see if we can see any nightlife. Yeah, it has been a serious afternoon, really action-packed. Loads of cool content from all sides. Just another day live on safari with wild earth. Um, I hope I'm hearing your name correctly. Uh, Jordi, um, the collective noun for a group of leopards is a leap. A leap of leopards. That's a nice one. Very, very, very cool. Yeah, there's some uh, lovely collective nouns I know. Ralph was discussing them earlier. Oh, Buri, uh, my apologies there. I didn't, uh, didn't hear that one correctly. Uh, thanks very much for your question there, Buri. Um, yeah, my favorite collective noun, I think, is uh, a parliament, and that is for uh, the collective of owls. Uh, but it is probably the most inappropriate one, or inappropriately chosen one. Um, I think um, owls have this, uh, this aura of uh, wisdom around them, so uh, the thinking is that they look uh, like uh, old uh, parliamentarians. But uh, the way parliaments, <laughs> parliaments function these days, not, uh, not so wise. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm uh, I'm sad to be wrapping things up at Juma for now. Um, it has been such an incredible cycle. Um, don't really want it to end. <laughs> I still can't believe the amount of ox peckers on this poor, poor hippopotamus. Almost more ox pecker than skin at the moment. Although they do seem to be retreating now it's heading into the water. Maybe that's what you should have done first there. Wow, they really are. That was an effective method there, hippopotamus. Well done. And oh, they go. <laughs> Joanna, reptile blood is uh, much the same as ours in colour. It, uh, it is red. Um, very, very red. Uh, yeah, and um, as, uh, as we bumbled on um, earlier, I, I uh, fielded a question about um, the temperature of reptile blood. I believe the question was, is reptile blood uh, cold? A uh, reptile blood can be basically uh, cold, medium, or uh, or hot. Um, again, it it all depends on um, on the temperature outside. Um, a reptile could arguably be anywhere from uh, close to freezing to um, to 35 or 40 degrees Celsius, desperately in need to uh, find a shady spot and cool down. They're heavily, heavily affected by the um, external environment around them. Yeah, if you pick up a snake on a hot day, its body could literally be hot to the touch. Uh, pick it up early in the morning in the winter, uh, it would be icy cold. Not that I'm advocating you picking up snakes, that's uh, not what I meant to do there. <laughs> Just an example.
So uh, as we continue to reflect on all sorts of bush things, reptiles included, let's uh, pop over to fellow naturalist Cedric, also bumbling. Definitely, Liam. I think uh, that's definitely a life lesson right there. Do not pick up snakes. I think uh, there is some snakes around here that uh, you do not want to encounter and pick up. But uh, well, one thing about snakes, I always try to avoid us. Uh, you know, I think there's a whole misconception of snakes, kind of, especially like the black mamba who wants to come out and you know, attack us and all that, but I think, oh, sorry, little bunny, I didn't see you, yeah. Oh. Hello, hello. But yeah, uh, but luckily now, this time of the year, a lot of the snakes are pretty much now are hibernating and sleeping. It's uh, quite cold, too, too cold for them. So, but I also, I found uh, Puff had a tracks not long ago. I think it was, when was, was it? Oh, it was this morning, eh, hey? Jan? I think we saw, yeah. But, um, so yeah, looks like the puff adders, but then again, puff adders, they do not use that much energy like, uh, like black mummers and uh, uh, Mozambique spitting cobras and snouted cobras. So, uh, puff adders are more kind of lying on the pathways and waiting for something to run over it. But, uh, of course, uh, a few and far to find at this point of time. But if there's one or two still out, then that should be the puff adders. Other than that, others will be definitely hiding away somewhere and keeping warm. All right, I have my way from Chilipan. I was just, uh, I just went to go and backtrack on where those buffaloes came from. Just hoping that maybe we would have uh, got some uh, lion tracks on top of theirs or something that, that was following that herd of buffalo. Um, because when we, did, when, we did, when we did find that buffalo herd this afternoon, they were quite, um, I can say, edgy and not happy. But I think there was just a lot of testosterone with certain males in that herd that were sparring quite, quite hard. So yeah, it's, so we're just going to take a look further towards Gary Dam. We protect and reconnect nature across Southern Africa. We bring countries together to care for wild spaces that stretch beyond borders. We protect and restore biodiversity. We prioritize the people living in these landscapes, enabling them to thrive in harmony with nature. We are restoring tomorrow. If you would like to be a part of the team that shares the wildebeest migration in Kenya live on Wild Earth, then we have some great news for you. There are a few places left to join our expeditions in August and September this year. You'll be staying in an exclusive tented camp with ensuite bedrooms nestled in the riverine woodlands of the Talek River. Head over to our website to book your bucket list experience today. Wild Earth Expeditions. Travel with purpose. Definitely Arabella, that is, uh, that is uh, a, I can say a tip I got from a guy called Elliot uh, Bahuti, one of, uh, he was actually my mentor back in the day at Sabi Sabi, and uh, he kind of uh, was heading to a, a kill where of course something was really pungent, it was smelling terrible, but before he got there he stopped and grabbed that aniseed and grabbed it and of course uh, Gave it to all the guests, gave it to me. I was like a junior ranger at that time and put it into my hand. I'm like, oh, that's nice. And anyway, we went off to the, the kill and we got there. Oh my, it was, uh, it was really, really pungent. And he said, okay, crush the seeds and like just, you know, put it to your mouth like a mask. Well, nowadays you've got masks, so put it on, if you put it in your mask itself, you've got a mask in your pocket, put it inside there and slap it across your face. And uh, you'll get that beautiful uh, licorice aroma coming through instead of a, a pungent smell of a, a dead carcass. So yes, Arabella, it is definitely a, a nice little tip for the bush. All right, now I'm on Ingwe Alley. I am gonna look for a Janet that I usually see here quite a few times already. 
and it is a quite a relaxed one so I'm gonna keep my eyes peeled for his little eyeballs I'm hoping that he will be looking at us somewhere so let's take a look around yeah but once again it was just a it was fantastic I really enjoyed uh, working with uh, Liam again on his stint this side oh, it was absolutely amazing can't wait for to see him back again so yeah definitely up to Liam great character I always see that Janet, yeah. Anyway, talking about uh, the great character Liam, let's head over to him while he's on his safari. So, uh, thanks very much there, uh, Cederico. Uh, likewise, mate. Um, I've absolutely loved working with uh, the entire team, Cedric especially, um, out on drives. Um, the vibe has been extremely fun. We've had millions of laughs in, in the last 16 days. <laughs> and uh, that just makes the entire process go very, very smoothly indeed. I will be um, very excited to come back. Yeah, this uh, cycle with Wild Earth has absolutely flown by. I was just uh, reflecting as I was driving there on all the amazing things we've seen and that phenomenal sighting of uh, Tlalumba and her uh, male cub killing that common daker on uh, my first game drive here. About 2,000 happy elephants. Uh, phenomenal buffalo. Having the wild dogs fighting with the hyenas the other day. Of course, all the beautiful Tlalumba stuff. Yeah, it has been uh, unbelievable. And what, um, what an honor and a privilege to, um, to have been able to share it with uh, all of you, all the hundreds of thousands of you out there um, as well. It is uh, a very, very special thing. Uh, Derek, not necessarily. Uh, not um, Snakes are not aggressively territorial in that sense. Uh, but male snakes will absolutely wrestle um, for the right to mate with females. Um, I've seen it on a number of occasions with uh, puff adders, mambas, wormslungs, spotted bush snakes. Um, you, you might occasionally see footage of two snakes in the road sort of uh, wrestling, totally in intertwined. And... Um, Many people for face value will tell you, oh no, these, these snakes are mating. Um, in actual fact, it's males trying to establish dominance. Um, I believe the individual that gets pinned to the ground in that wrestling match, uh, the majority, uh, he's the one that loses the rights. Oh, it raises lots of questions though. How, how did the females know? Because none of them are watching. So how do they know which... Uh, which male is, uh, is top dog. It uh, doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Yeah, lots of questions, and that is perhaps one of my favorite things about the natural world. Uh, there are so, so, so many things that we are yet to understand, even though science has developed so much over the last two or three centuries and continues to uh, develop at a, an increasing rate. Now, arguably, there's lots of stuff out there that we may never know. And that's, I think, where the magic lies. Here at Wild Earth, we want you to learn as much about the wild as possible. 
Sadly, we can't answer all the questions on Safari Live, so we've come up with a new way to solve the problem. I love answering your questions, and now I have the chance to answer even more. Sign up to be a Wild Earth Explorer, and you can join me on July the 6th after the Sunset Safari here at the beautiful Amakala Game Reserve. Have your questions ready. Wild Earth Explorers, it's in your nature. Here at Wild Earth, we promised great monthly prizes for our explorers, and this month is no exception. If you join our club before the 10th of July, then you stand a chance to win a fabulous Safari Guide online course brought to you by Bushwise Field Guides. They specialize in accredited Safari Guide training with courses tailored for the African Safari Lodge industry. Sign up to be a Wild Earth Explorer today and don't miss out on this life-changing opportunity. So uh, let's head over to Cedric and see how his nocturnal missions this evening are going. Yes, uh, no, definitely. I was looking for some nocturnal animals, but we have found once again another herd of buffalo. So that is three herds of buffalo on Juma today. So the other split up is working here. We had a nice herd on Zoe's heading west. So that's heading towards Impala Plains. That's quite far west from where we are now. We are on Philemon's cut line. He has another herd that we just bumped into here. this side now. Quite a big herd as well. And then we've got that herd down at 20 dams. Wow. Three uh, herds of buffalo. Maybe it could have been one big herd and all decided to split up here somehow for some other reason. No idea. But it is magical just to see so many buffalo on Juma Private Game Reserve. And I'm sure this is definitely going to bring some uh, lions uh, through. So I'm hoping tomorrow morning we are fortunate enough to get some lions onto Juma and uh, to view them. So yes, definitely, yeah, I've got, uh, got our work cut out for the morning. There you can see a nice young male still. That boss is not uh, really uh, ruggedy. It's still very, very smooth. Cara, a, a male buffalo without his boss. Can make a male buffalo without that? That would be a, definitely a huge uh, disadvantage to him. So you saw those two male, if you watched earlier, there was two male buffaloes that were sparring this afternoon, but properly, like really competing against each other with a, with a lot of power. And if a buffalo hasn't got that boss on his head, well, that is definitely a disadvantage. I think he will not even be able to spar. <clears throat> and he will have no uh, kind of, I can say, dominance in a herd, in a breeding herd. So I think those uh, bosses is very important to them. I wonder where they're going to settle down. They usually tend to settle on nice open clearings, like in a little open spots in the bush, uh, nothing too thick, so it's a little bit easier in case they don't want to get surprised by a pride of lions. But they are still moving, this herd is still moving in a westerly direction. Definitely not going to complain about buffalo today. <laughs> or buffalo soldier. Yeah, no, that is definitely magical for the afternoon. And it just shows you winter time. As soon as uh, things start drying up, the uh, rain has uh, disappeared for now. And I think you'll definitely, in the next couple of months, You'll definitely see more of these herds coming through Juma to some of these watering holes that still has water and to some of these areas that haven't been really utilized, the grazing areas that haven't been really utilized. It's time to put your feet up after a long week. Wild Earth invites you to unwind with a weekend at the water hole, our life source of the bush, home to so much joy and danger. Join us on the 9th and 10th of July 
to get your wildlife refill broadcasted to you live all weekend at the Waterhole. Wild Earth's weekend at the Waterhole is going to be epic and we want to make sure that you are kitted out for the occasion. We've launched some wonderful merchandise just for you. Are you a damn cam lover? Find these and more on our website. So get your snacks ready, put your feet up and join us for a weekend at the Waterhole. Jerome, uh, negative. Uh, there's no birds uh, uh, that follow buffaloes at night time. Uh, usually the buffaloes will usually settle by now. I don't know what they still, these ones still want to move a little bit more, but I don't think they're going to be moving much longer. But uh, Jerome, the di birds are diurnal, so they're not going to see exactly what they're doing. So they'll rather go nest and roost in the trees at night time. And then, of course, the daytime, once it's uh, becoming nice and light again, those birds will then, of course, pick up on those buffaloes. And then, especially like your oxpeckers, uh, your forktail drongos, birds like that, uh, they will not move and follow them at night. So, not actually hardly any birds following them at night time. Now and again, you'll actually find, so like, if you're getting, like, um, your night jars. So sometimes your night jars will uh, take a little bit of that opportunity if they disturb the grass and have a few eggs flying around. Maybe the night jars might take that opportunity to catch a bit of uh, food. But I haven't seen it yet, so um, maybe maybe that could be a case. real strange noises here. Yeah. Almost uh, sounds like my tummy. <laughs> anyway, while well, we're going to continue moving away from this herd of uh, buffalo, let's head over to Liam to see how his safari is going. Definitely Cedric's stomach. I can hear it from here. <laughs> BK agrees. <laughs> that is awesome. No, certainly lots of buffalo around at the moment. And uh, with some luck, potentially, that encourages those um, wonderful lions from Chitwa to uh, come up and uh, join us on Juma tomorrow. Yeah, just a couple of minutes from uh, ending the show, unfortunately. Um, but don't fret. Um, the story continues tomorrow. So, uh, yeah, thanks to everybody at home for uh, joining us on uh, this evening's stint. We hope, uh, in a big way, that uh, you're motivated enough to join us on tomorrow's one as well. Promises to be a great one. Betty, thank you so much. <laughs> I most certainly will. Um, I do have plans to come back and join Wild Earth a little bit later on in the year. But, um, but I'll certainly confirm that. Yeah, if anybody would like to, to stay in touch or uh, sort of... Uh, check on my adventures over the next couple of months before I am back at Wild Earth. You're welcome to check me out um, on Instagram. Uh, and I will uh, certainly let you know when I plan uh, to return. It is uh, hopefully going to be sooner rather than later. But yeah, a couple of adventures planned in the next short while. A little bit more flying promises to be promises to be a good time uh, Oliver thanks very much for your kind words that's uh, lovely to hear it has been a treat for me to present all of this outrageous animal content to you
So from all of us here at Wild Earth and uh, myself in particular, very sincerely, thank you so much. Have a great night or a great day wherever you are and uh, hope to see you again soon. Viewer discretion is advised.